Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto possessed the power of Super Saiyan? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. It took Vegeta a few minutes to realize he was in a dark space and his only company was the massive creature that he had been dragged in with. He also noted that all his injuries from his fight with Janemba had been healed and felt the Zenkai boost he got from those injuries healing. Looking up at his roommate, he gauged the creature's appearance was that of a giant fox. Great, I'm stuck in wherever this place is with an overgrown furball with a birth defect, honestly nine tails. Who are you besides making for a delicious light snack? The Kyubi growled lunging his paw forward only for the Saiyan to stop it with a single finger. Vegeta gauged the huge monster's power level, bah, you bore me creature your power level isn't any higher than that pathetic older brother of Kakaro, Raditz. Really only 1500. I am the strongest biju in the world the only one to surpass me was the sage of the six paths, the fox explained only for the Saiyan prince to laugh. If you're the strongest of this world then this planet is utterly pathetic, the prince looked around and could sense both his and the fox's energy draining. I feel a pull on my energy. We were sealed by the Shinigami the Gaki's parents sacrificed themselves to prevent me from running amok, the fox growled, if that Ingu Chiha hadn't been there I could have ran for it, but no his infernal Sharingan and his infernal Genjutsu. The Saiyan prince crossed his arms over his chest looking up at the fox, we appear to have plenty of time so explain to me about this world. Though reluctant the fox explained to the Saiyan about the ins and outs of the shinobi world, the five great shinobi nations, his hatred of the humans, his fellow biju, the sage of the six paths, the Uchiha, the Senju, and the Uzumaki clans as well as stating all three descended from the sage. When he was finished the Saiyan prince pursed his lips in thought, I see interesting, this Madara Uchiha's power level would probably be on par with that of Zarbon's base form and if you combined with the Gaki we are sealed in you could reach the power level of Zarbon's transformed state. Ha! Huh. The lot of you are weak I bet I could kill this sage of the six paths without even using 1% of my power. Vegeta thinking looking up at the seal then over at the huge fox then smirked. And I think I know a way to free myself from this stupid seal and give the Gaki a chance to get revenge on this Uchiha who killed his parents. And what way would that be, foolish little ninja? The fox growled though he was worried this little being had stopped his attack with a mere finger and called the father of Shinobi a weakling. But it was the strange gleam in the Saiyan's eye that put the fox on guard. Vegeta smirked slowly lifting into the air until he came level with the fox's face. So this seal will be able to draw this chakra from your body over time. I wonder what would happen to your chakra if I destroyed your body, well only one way to find out. Vegeta powered up and brought his arms out spread eagle, final, the Saiyan brought his hands together and a massive ball of energy appeared, before the fox react the energy lanced out toward it, flash. The fox barely registered the pain before it vanished in a massive explosion. Once the smoke cleared all that was left a large energy outline of the fox before the energy was pulled toward the pipes lining the walls and disappeared. Just as I figured, Vegeta said softly looking around and grumbled in annoyance. Great now I have to wait until the Gaki gets pulled in before I can bestow my powers to him maybe I should have waited until then to kill the furball. Bah, I didn't need the headache. What do you mean I can't take him? Hiruzen cringed looking at the dark haired and dark eyed woman resembling most of her clan, he is my godson. I'm sorry the civilian council already pushed the motion through, no one is allowed to adopt him, Makoto I'm sorry, the old Hokage stated sadly. Makoto's eyes were filled with rage and sadness, who told them, what asshole told them about the seal. I suspect Danzo or your husband I have no concrete evidence, so I'm leaning more towards Danzo, Serutobi explained. Doubly so since he's already petitioning to have Naruto placed in his root program. Absolutely not, that would weaken or destroy everything Minato and Kashina died for. Makoto's own knowledge of seals hailing from her friendship with Kashina and her training from Jiraiya as a part of his genin squad. I agree, Serutobi sighed heavily suddenly both of them felt a massive surge of chakra, what was that, he whispered when a bright flash appeared from the bassinet that was holding Naruto. Both Makoto and Serutobi ran over and looked down to see Naruto blowing chakra pulsing all around him for a second before slowly dying down, 
when it was done they saw Naruto's hair change from blonde to a reddish orange outside of that not much change. The seal also changed slightly. Serutobi turned to the Anbu in the room, get me Jiraiya, today. Jiraiya stared intently at the seal a few minutes before standing at his full height and scratching his head in abject confusion, according to the seal, the fox's chakra has fully been absorbed but something is still sealed inside though for the life of me I don't know what, damn this is confusing. The fox is dead. Makoto asked looking hopeful. Yes, but for the life of me I don't know how, it would take unfathomable power to accomplish it, Jiraiya crossed his arms shuddering. Sensei whatever killed the fox is still inside the seal that's why we still have a seal and whatever it is, is by far thousands of times stronger than any biju. Your recommendation? Serutobi asked. The toad sage glanced at Makoto no doubt hoping to get to finally take her godson and raise him. However Jiraiya was worried about this thing that killed the fox could be possibly an even bigger threat, with a heavy heart and sigh, change nothing. What? Makoto shouted. No I refuse to let you both do this, I promised Kashina to look after him if something happened to her, the exact same promise you made to Minato, Jiraiya sensei. Do you seriously believe I want to do this Makoto? Jiraiya shouted back. Do you seriously think I want him thrown to the wolves? There are two factors we have to take into account, Minato's enemies and the fact we can't trust your husband. Makoto winced looking down, you seriously believe Fugaku would corrupt Naruto in some way? That or try to kill him and not for being a Jinchuriki, he despised Minato and Kashina, wasn't even secretive about it, I know you have your heart set on it Makoto and I would gladly do the same but we draw too many lines straight to Naruto. While Onoki has no real ill will toward the Konoha many of his shinobi do and they'll want to destroy what's left of his legacy. I want to protect both, so as much as it pains me I have to let Naruto go, at least until the Chunin exams, after that I'll make him my apprentice. Makoto slumped down tears falling from her eyes glancing at the bassinet holding her godson. Every maternal instinct in her was screaming to grab the boy and run, but it was clashing with the fact she had two sons already. Sobbing in guilt and remorse for what she was being forced to do she nodded, I if I can't raise him, I at least want to watch over him, if those orphanage matrons so much as lifts one finger on his head except to clean it or pat it for being a good boy I want full permission to slaughter them if they raise their hands in anger. Serutobi nodded looking grim, understood and I'll make sure they know you'll be overseeing his care from a distance. With a silent nod the Uchiha matriarch left. Makoto entered the Uchiha home sullen expression on her face knowing she would in for more than a few sleepless nights holding off nightmares of her dead friend excusing her of giving in to the Hokage and her sensei too easily. So the little demon isn't with you, a male voice stated and before he could utter another word more he felt a kanai blade against his throat. Know this Fugaku, I never agreed to our marriage, I don't or never have loved you, in fact I hate you so much sometimes I cannot see straight. I had hoped to bring one sliver of love into this compound but I was denied. The only things that have come from this marriage were Sasuke and Itachi even then it was forced, I will not let you touch me again, my skin was raw enough from the scrubbing I had to endure afterward, the woman stated coldly. Fugaku's eyes narrowed, you are mine. Never, if Itachi and Sasuke hadn't been born I would have annulled the marriage claiming you were sterile, but know the two times I was forced into your bed by the elders just so they could have their heir and I get pregnant. Makoto's Sharingan activated. If I find out that Danzo was involved in either of those occasions I will gut you personally. If that is ever the case I'll make sure you die right next to me, Makoto this I promise you, Fugaku stated coldly. Makoto's Sharingan spun wildly glaring at her, husband, from this moment on Fugaku I'm moving into the house on the far edge of the compound. I love my sons more than anything, but I hate you and will be removing myself from your clutches. There will be a blood clone to keep up appearances for the clan but as far as I'm concerned, we are no longer married. Fugaku watched her leave the room growling low in his throat neither he nor his wife saw the figure in the shadow watching the conversation. Kasen hates Tucson. XXX Uchiha massacre Makoto sighed heavily it had been a long week the mission she went on had been easy enough head to the land of Iron Guard the fire daimyo's wife while she and the wives had a mini summit discussing the trade agreements and other things their husbands overlooked. Escorting the woman back had as uneventful as the trip there. She entered the tower shortly before closing for the day, handing in her mission scroll. It was on the way back when she felt the distinct pressure of killing intent coming from the Uchiha compound, then she saw the ill omen of the blood red moon, blood is being spilled, 
She rushed toward the compound the moment she entered she spotted a couple of the advanced guards sprawled on the ground dead from various sword wounds very distinctive sword wounds, those wounds, Itachi's style. She made it to roof to hear an ear-splitting male scream. Sasuke. Running pushing her body to brink neck speed she found Sasuke slumped on the ground with his brother standing above him stoically. Itachi? The woman stated holding two kanai loosely in her hands. Kasen. You were right to hate father, he would have destroyed the village in his greed, Itachi stated solemnly. So you killed him and everyone else, even those not in on his plans, why? Makoto asked feeling her heart break slightly. No, I didn't kill everyone only those involved in a coup d'etat against the village, however I didn't come alone and he was the one who slaughtered everyone else, Fugaku though killed your blood clone forgetting that it wasn't you, Itachi frowned deeply. He truly had slipped into madness, is that our real curse? not the Mangeku Sharingan but true madness? Yes, I was the exception or I thought I was, she stated her eyes transforming into Mangeku Sharingan. H how? Itachi asked, Kashina's death at the hands of the Kayubi was the instigator I lost the closest thing to what I had to a sister and then I was denied my god parenting rights the grief compounded so much that after my words to your father, they changed, it's why I left so fast, Makoto put away her kanai. Where will you go? Lord Jiraiya offered me a place in his spy organization, I'll take him up on his offer, he's worried about a new organization and their goals, Itachi explained. Go Sochi, Jiraiya sensei wouldn't ask you to help him if it wasn't important, the Uchiha matriarch stated. Kasen, Sasuke believes you to be dead, Itachi stated. And I will be, Makoto Uchiha died this night I'll move into the same apartment complex as Naruto-kun and alter my appearance. The woman watched as her eldest son vanished before turning to her youngest frowning slightly feeling the blood clone's memories slowly trickle in and what she saw made the frown only get bigger. You are entirely too much like your father Sasuke, so I hope for your sake you don't end up like him. W where am I? Naruto asked groggily. You're in the seal Yugaki, stated a voice. Do you have any idea how long I've been trying to do this? The whiskered Mark Jinchuriki spun and came face to face with something he wasn't expecting a man only slightly taller than himself. Um, are you the fox? Ha, huh, the fox has been dead since you were a day old gaggy, no I am Vegeta and I am the prince of all Saiyans, the man stated crossing his arms. Are really wow that's kinda cool, so um, what do you want? Naruto asked nervously. To get out of this cage for one but if I did it the old fashioned way you'd die. The Saiyan prince stated coolly. Plus it would waste the potential to bring forth a new Saiyan race into this world. So here is my proposal, take the seal off and absorb all that I am into you, my knowledge, my strength, my abilities, and my DNA to become the first of a new breed of Saiyan to combine this chakra and ki into something infinitely more powerful. Um, and what's the catch? Naruto asked not trusting the man completely who simply smiled. Not as dumb as you betray, Gaki. Find the catch as I want to die in this world so those I left behind will wish me back with the Dragon Balls and return me home, this will grant me a massive Zenkai boost hopefully to put me on par with Kakaro, Vegeta explained. Aside from my powers and abilities you'll be given from this, I'll use the second and third wish to return your parents to you considering they reside albeit partially in the seal though I'm not 100% sure it can be done, the Saiyan stated pointing at the slip of paper. However I feel their souls and they are lying dormant this leaves me to believe they wanted to meet with you at some point in your life, mostly likely it was to deal with the giant furball. Naruto looked at the seal shaking slightly almost wanting to rip the seal off just finally meet his parents, the deal that was given to him had almost zero downsides if anything it was arguably the sweetest deal anyone could possibly make, power strong enough to kill a biju and to have his parents in his life again. It's too good to be true, he whispered sadly. I have seen your life, Naruto, Vegeta being uncharacteristically sympathetic. If anything this is the least anyone can do for you for suffering you've had, may whatever deity you would have to give you this, I feel you deserve them ten times over and that is coming from someone who blew up planets for fun in my youth. Looking pale at the mention of destroying an entire planet so casually, not even the biju capable of such a feat, why you really blew up an entire planet? Several actually your planet's strongest warrior this sage of the six paths Shinra Tensai technique could create a huge crater its power level one roughly surmise would be about 560 though gauging it without first hand seeing it is moronic at best, Vegeta paused. 
However with that in mind this man at most had a power level was 2500 strong but not enough to do more than make the surface uninhabitable the same with this Madara Uchiha the fox cursed about their strength and speed barely scratched the sound barrier, the strongest of us if he wasn't a complete baka could destroy an entire galaxy if he wanted to, the Saiyan prince let loose a snicker mentioning his longtime rival. W what are you? Naruto asked tentatively. Vegeta growled slightly, I'm the second strongest in our universe, followed by the Baka's Gaki then my son and the Baka's second brat, then the Namekian and finally the Q-Ball's wife you'll understand what I mean when I give you my abilities. Naruto nodded thinking hard before taking a deep breath and walking up to the cage door taking a shuddering breath his hand hovering of the paper seal. With brief swish of his hand the seal was gone revealing a strange spiraling mechanism. However this was rendered mute as Vegeta slammed his palm into the door sending the gate flying over Naruto no sooner the gate crashed to the ground two figures appeared between him and Vegeta. Is what you say true? The male figure stated as the dim gloom of the sewer changed into a brightly lit white space. Naruto however recognized the man instantly, T the fourth Hokage? The woman standing next to the man looked equally confused expecting to see a large fox looming over them. Are you my Kasan and Tucson? The woman had long flowing red hair with deep violet colored eyes staring back at the boy with such love and compassion it caused Naruto ache the woman knelt and stretched her arms wide and it was all the invitation the whisker marked blonde needed, flinging himself at the woman. Oh my Sochi, the woman whispered tears streaming down her face as she enveloped her son in a warm embrace. Kasen, Naruto whimpered over and over sobbing. I take it you heard from the seal. And yes what I say is true however I'm not 100% positive you can be revived, simply stated it is a gamble. Your souls have not fully gone to the other world yet therefore it is possible that the Dragon Balls will revive you, Vegeta explained. I'll take anything at this moment, Minato Namikaze stated softly. I also agree with what you're about to do if anything I like to join you give all my experience to Sochi. Kashina Uzumaki nodded. Then let us begin. Vegeta walked up putting both his hands on Naruto's shoulders. Now the two of you put a hand on my shoulder, when the fusion begins we will vanish and officially die leaving everything to your gaki and I pity all those he encounters afterward for they are in for a world of hurt to anyone that pisses him off. Both Kashina and Naruto cackle slightly, few seconds later the entire area glowed. XXXDBZ Universe, Purunga, my first wish is to revive Vegeta and bring him forth to this world, Den shouted. Your wish is granted. The huge muscled dragon spoke, a flash later and Vegeta stood looking around before crossing his arms glaring at Goku and Dend. Took you long enough, I've been waiting for 13 years, Kakuro, the Saiyan prince scowled. Goku blinked scratching the back of his head in confusion, really wow, the time jump is amazing it's only been what a month, Dend. Not even that three weeks since Janemba he's dead by the way, Dend explained. What is your second wish? The dragon growled looking on impatiently. Vegeta stepped forward looking up at something ten years ago he would have gladly asked for immortality. Dent the world I came from two people sacrificed their lives to protect their home and son sealing a part of their souls into a seal to help maintain it. Even though their physical bodies had expired does that include their souls? Dent looked confused but addressed the Namekian dragon and its reply, no. Their souls had not been sent to other world until recently therefore the deaths count as recent, do you wish for them to be revived? Yes, for the second wish I like to see Minato Namikaze revived and for the third I like to see Kashina Uzumaki revived, Vegeta stated to Dend who relayed the wishes to the dragon whose eyes glowed with each wish. With that the dragon balls zoomed into the air then split sword into seven different directions. Both Dend and Goku were smiling at the Saiyan prince, what? I'm amazed at you Vegeta it's the first time you I believe you were thinking of someone other than yourself, Den stated. Vegeta growled turning his head his cheeks turning pink, bah, I did it to pay back this gaki I met, in return of getting a massive Zenkai boost I gave him my knowledge and powers as well as giving him back his parents, considering his life was worse than mine. Goku patted the prince on the shoulder, I get it you're alright. Shut up Kakaro. When we return to the earth you owe me a spar and an explanation on how you defeated that red skinned goofball Janemba, the Saiyan prince states. Sure but can we stop back at my home I'm a bit hungry, Goku stated a bright smile on his face. Fine, Vegeta's own stomach growled, I hope your woman doesn't mind cooking for one more. Nah, Chi Chi won't mind, I think, 
Goku chuckled putting his fingers to his forehead as he grabbed both Vegeta and Dende a second later with a brief goodbye to the gather Namics the trio vanished. Naruto sat up looking around he spotted Sasuke unconscious next to him sweating profusely and from what the whisker marked Saiyan could sense the Uchiha's chakra was becoming foul and tainted. However he could sense a power level just outside, jumping to his feet Naruto raced out instantly on guard seeing the auto nin from the first exam in periodic states, the kunoichi of the group was down bleeding from her mouth, the one who looked like a mummy was slowly standing up, while the one with the wild haired had Sakura down his fist reared back. When this one let his fist fly slamming into Sakura's cheek, something in Naruto just snapped. Why why you touched my Sakura? Everyone looked up as a massive blast of energy exploded out of the whisker marked Saiyan, a second later Naruto vanished and reappeared on top of the wild haired Otto Nin who barely had a chance to register shock before his head was literally caved in by a punch so fast and hard that the very air made a thunderclap. The Otto Nin was dead before his body went flying into the forest at supersonic speed. Naruto vanished again the mummy Otto Nin tried to dodge the incoming blow he knew was coming but he might as well be moving in tar. The strike was just too fast, elbow embedded in his gut liquefied his internal organs before he too vanished into the forest his body getting blasted away by the impact. The orange haired Saiyan turned to the lone Kunoichi walking up to her and extended his hand a ball of energy forming. Give me one good reason not to end your miserable life, he stated coldly. Naruto stop, he heard Sakura stated trying to stand her face and body looking battered from her defense of her teammates as team guy and team 10 looked on in odd horror. They had never seen anyone in their lives move that fast, not even Guy and Lee could move that fast using the gates unless they opened them all. Her and her teammates, attacked us in attempt to kill us give me one good reason not to remove her from this mortal coil, Naruto stated surprisingly viciously to those in the group that knew him from the academy. Sakura stood there stunned, what did that Orochimaru guy do to you Naruto? The rosette haired girl walked up to him and did something uncharacteristic for her, she put her arms around him please she's not worth it. She heard a sigh and felt more than saw him drop his hand, she then felt him turn in her arms and pull her into his arms, the moment those two arms wrapped around her she felt safe, warmth. She was also a bit annoyed though now that she felt danger had passed. And who said I was yours, she muttered trying to step away only for Naruto to hold her in place. She looked up into Naruto's eyes and what she saw startled her, you are too good for Sasuke came the reply and before she could protest the orange haired saiyan zipped in ing the rosette deeply and passionately. Fireworks exploded in Sakura's mind at first she wanted to hammer Naruto but as the lingered she felt her hands slowly go from pushing him away to simply staying in place to slowly snaking their way around Naruto's neck one hand desperately grabbing the fabric of his jumpsuit while the other was actually pushing the back of his head into her moor. I'm ing Naruto and, her mind came to a brief halt as she melted into the moor, Okami he's good. When they finally separated Naruto took two steps back admiring his handiwork glancing at the other gathered smirking at the dumbfounded expressions, not mention nosebleeds coming from Ino, the Otto Kunoichi, and Tenten. Meanwhile, inner Sakura had her own two cents to add, Sasuke who? Do you have a scroll? Turning to the Otto Nin who nodded handing it to him, Naruto looked at before slipping it into his hip pouch, as the group slowly came back to themselves. Sakura slowly crawled out of her induced stupor she glanced at Naruto and blushed. Team Guy left after making sure Naruto and Sakura were good, Team 10 left after Ino helped Sakura straighten her hair, the lone Otto Kunoichi however had been tied up. No sooner had Sakura finished the last knot Naruto felt Sasuke wake up, Sakura better guard our prisoner. Before asking what he meant she saw Sasuke appear, Sasuke are you alright? She asked not noticing she didn't use the kun suffix. It did hurt that Naruto hadn't called her Sakura-chan though. Never felt better, came the cold reply. Like to try my new power though, Sasuke glanced around then focused on the tied up Kunoichi, she'll do maybe after I break her I'll use her to revive my clan. The Uchiha paused as if to think about it. Hmm, yes that sounds perfect. The Otto Kunoichi tensed in fear before the orange clad boy stepped in between her and the Uchiha. Not going to happen Teme, so get whatever perverted shit in your head out. Sakura watched on horrified, did I just hear Sasuke say he was going to rape that girl after he beat her up while she's defenseless. T that can't be true. Get out my way Dobi, it's not like you can beat me, Sasuke sneered. 
Naruto snorted crossing his arms over his chest, that power boost you got has two things working against you, one it makes you a pansy since you can't do anything on your own and two it don't hold a candle to the power boost I just got. So unless you want your spleen pulverized you'll back off, this girl is going to I and T. Said girl nodded frantically she'd gladly take that over the prospects of getting beaten and raped repeatedly by that monster. Sasuke ran forward Kanai drawn Sakura shouted for him to stop, he ignored her, annoying little after I take care of Naruto and have my fun with the whore behind him, I'll kill her claim Naruto did it. Running and seeing Naruto hadn't even brought out a Kanai defend himself lunged forward only to be intercepted by Naruto's finger. The Uchiha repeatedly tried to stab Naruto with the Kanai only meeting each strike with his finger which wasn't even bleeding. It's not possible how can he be that fast, he was never that fast before. What was he even more infuriating was Naruto's expression, he looked bored to tears. Grr. Jumping back Sasuke went through a series of hand signs, fire style. Fireball jutsu. He watched in satisfaction as both Naruto and the Otto Kunoichi were enveloped. Now Sakura, hold still this will only hurt for a moment. He stated cruelly turning to the rosette-haired girl who looked on in confusion for a second until she saw her crush drawing another kanai. Oh you didn't just imply you were going to attack Sakura-chan, came a voice from the smoke causing the Uchiha to spin around he saw Naruto step out of the smoke completely unharmed along with the Otto Nin. For the second time since entering the forest of death Sasuke felt terrified, hh how. Naruto glared coldly at him before seemingly vanishing and reappearing right in front of him grabbing his shirt. Listen here you teme, I can take you bad mouthing me, trying to burn me or kill me, but no one threatens Sakura, the orange haired Saiyan growled. She is off limits period and if I didn't need you for this second exam or that would make Sakura cry I'd have killed you for even thinking of laying a hand on her, do I make myself absolutely clear. H how did you get that kind of power? Sasuke growled in anger, fear, and envy. Do I make myself absolutely clear? Naruto growled through his teeth completely ignoring the Uchiha increasing his ki with each word. I don't give a shit about your stupid revenge against your stupid brother for whatever stupid reason you have. I'm giving you fair warning you try to betray the village or try to kill anyone I consider precious I will make sure it's the last thing you do, that is a promise. The Uchiha shivered internally in fear what he was feeling dwarfed that of Orochimaru or his brother as Naruto shoved him away violently. Okay we can make it to the tower now, thanks to, um, what is your name by the way, Naruto turning to the Otto Nin. I it's Kin, the girl stated causing Naruto to smile. Right Kin, thanks to her we got both scrolls, the Saiyan stated. Um, Naruto that Orochimaru guy swallowed our heaven scroll we only have the earth, Sakura replied tentatively then raised an eyebrow as Naruto curled into a ball. No he didn't but he did something far worse. Naruto muttered tears in his eyes. Recovering slightly from his blood Sasuke snorted, and that would be? He burned up my storage scroll filled with five days worth of Ichiraku ramen, Naruto shuddered. The horror. Sakura huffed but inwardly she was happy, apparently not everything about Naruto had changed. She instinctively licked her lips which had become slightly puffing from the she shared with him, my first and it was with Naruto of all people and I liked it. No not just liked it I wanted more I wanted him. What about Sasuke? Sakura glanced at her long time crush shuddering remembering the blood aimed at her. That bastard wanted us dead, and Naruto kun saved us, protected us. Here's an idea when we get to the tower let's have Minaj say toi with Naruto kun and Hinata. Her inner personality stated Sakura frowned slightly. What are you talking about? Inner gave her a full grin. Think about it riding him in a way he'll never forget while we watch little miss Hyuga princess squirm from Naruto kun's tongue, come just thinking about it gets my panties wet. The healthy blush decorated her face watching Naruto and Sasuke plan their route to the tower. Naruto was able to surprisingly draw a very detailed map of the closed in area. Why include Hinata and why are we even having this conversation I like Sasuke not Naruto, um, I do right. She asked her inner. First, by what Kakashi sensei said about Naruto kun's life two girls is the least amount of payback whiskers deserves. As for Sasuke the guy just tried to kill us, only a complete moron or a really bad manga writer would even consider staying with him after something like that. And didn't you hear the passion in Naruto kun's voice, didn't you see the unconditional love he has for us in those beautiful baby blue eyes of his. 
Sakura remembered seeing them just before Naruto ate her, the same love he poured into the that followed, the same that made her heart pound so hard in her chest. The trek was agreed to the trio and their prisoner headed in the direction leaping into the trees. Their path took them through forest having to stop briefly to help a red-haired girl with glasses who being chased by a bear. Naruto turned the huge mammal into tenderloin and was shocked to discover this girl was an Uzumaki. She joined them on their trek to the tower asking a dozen questions. Upon reaching the tower with no further incidents, they discovered the secret to the scrolls and opened them who appeared wasn't someone the trio suspected and one had a look both confusion and rage. Not possible I saw your body on the ground, how can you be alive, Kasen? Makoto Uchiha looked at her son for the first time in seven years without a henge or clever makeup and it wasn't even a look of guilt or remorse, no it was a look of abject disappointment. What you saw was a blood clone, it dissipated two days after the massacre I haven't been in the main compound since you were a year old, Sasuke. Why you left a clone to raise me in Itachi, what kind of mother would do that? Sasuke growled. A mother who outright despised her husband, I didn't want to marry him, I didn't want any children from him, I was forced to crawl into that bastard's bed. Makoto glared at Sasuke. If it had been my choice you and your brother would never have existed, at least not in your present forms, reminding me daily what that er put me through, the woman cursed. Sasuke stood there stunned at the venom coming from the woman who gave birth to him, in contrast to the clone that raised him who had been far more docile. Then why let me think you were dead? To protect you and your brother do you truly think Itachi didn't slaughter his clan unless he had a reason to? Your power-hungry sperm donor wanted to take over the village and kill my godson simply because he was Minato Namikaze's son, Makoto stated. Sasuke glared at the woman, then you should went on along with it like a true Uchiha. The Uchiha are a cursed clan has been since Madara, to be born into that clan and I'm glad it is almost extinct, Makoto said glancing at Naruto her harsh gaze softening. It's wonderful to finally see you face to face without all the layers of genjutsu and makeup. You look so much like Kushi-chan and Minato-kun. Naruto smiled scratching the back of his head. Yeah well if things were done right you've probably seen Tucson and Kasen already. Makoto winced slightly, yes, Kushi-chan went on the warpath I think Jiraiya-sensei is still feeling the effects of it. While Sasuke seethed internally drawing the conclusion easily that Naruto of all people was his godbrother through the conversation, Sakura was completely stunned for two reasons Sasuke's mother appearance her animosity toward her own son and the fact that Makoto stated Naruto's father was the fourth Hokage and somehow not only was the fourth alive but so was his wife. W wait you're saying that the fourth Hokage is alive. Sasuke stiffened having forgotten who Minato Namikaze was in his anger or the fact that his mother and Naruto stated that he was alive. Makoto nodded, yes how that came about however is classified only ones who know or me. Jiraiya Sensei, the fourth Hokage, Kashina Uzumaki, and Naruto here. The Uchiha matriarch gestured, crossing her arms over her chest. Kushi damn near killed the old man when he explained his reasoning, if Minato kun hadn't been there. She looked up at the ceiling sadly, she wanted so badly to hug the red head when she saw her, but the heated glare she received when she first appeared made it almost impossible. It was only through explanation and surprisingly her sensei and the old Hokage taking the blame that saved her from Kashina's anger. When the explanations had been given out and Makoto told Kashina that she did her best to look after Naruto even after she'd been denied her godparenting rights, that the two had a tearful reunion. Hugs and a surprisingly passionate from the redhead that was used as a prank on the two raging perverts in the room, who were blown back by massive nosebleeds even Minato had won. Minato-kun has no idea how many times Kashina and I discussed sharing him, I wonder if Kushi-chan's offer is still good. I'm still young and Kushi-chan has no fox in her now we could provide Minato-kun with the big family he's always wanted, not to mention give Naruto real brothers and sisters. Putting those thoughts aside focused on her wayward son, godson, and the rosette-haired girl. You've passed the second stage of the exams, she raised an eyebrow at the redhead and brunette in the room. What do we have here? Karen Uzumaki, the redhead stated softly. Makoto smiled, are you really? Well that will make Kushi-chan ecstatic she was afraid her clan was all but dead aside from herself, her Sochi, and her second cousin, she then turned to the tied-up Otto Nin, and the prisoner? Her name's Kin, will Crazy Snake Lady and Scars be nice to her? Naruto asked. I think she may have info on that Orochimaru Teme we met in the forest. 
The Uchiha matriarch glanced at Naruto, then at Kin, and finally at Sasuke. Show me your neck Sasuke, she said firmly Sasuke reached up instinctively to the mark on his left shoulder. This caused Makoto to frown deeply. Better have Kashina look at that she's already disabled Anko's heaven's curse seal. Leave it alone, Sasuke glared at his mother before he could back up any further, Naruto gave him a measured neck chop knocking him out. There you go, Obasan, Naruto smiled as the dark-haired boy slumped forward for the orange-haired Saiyan to catch him. Makoto smiled, thank you, Karen, kin come with me, Naruto you and Sakura are free to roam, there are rooms down the hall and to the right for you to sleep and there's a kitchen to left if you're hungry, Kushi-chan and Minato-kun will be here tomorrow their meeting with the village council to confirm it is them and then they are going to lay down the law so to speak, Makoto's smile turned predatory for a second. I would pity the civilian council if I cared, but I don't. Naruto returned the predatory smile with one of his own. After that Makoto threw Sasuke over her shoulder and ushered her charges away leaving Naruto and Sakura alone who headed toward the rooms to drop off their gear in one before heading off to eat. Once inside Naruto walked over to the farthest desk and went about putting his gear on the nightstand by the table he heard the door being shut he turned hearing footsteps rushing toward him. He he was sensing wasn't hostile so he simply finished his turn and felt two arms wrap around his neck and then a pair of lips latch onto his own, knowing who it was he deepened the ing causing her to moan. Sasuke is not good enough for her, I'm not good enough for her but I don't care, she's mine and I'll do anything to protect her. Naruto thought feeling Sakura slide her arms to his chest lightly grabbing the fabric of his jumpsuit which he mentally stated he was going to toss the moment he and his parents got a place to live or had a place to live. When they separated he looked into the jade green eyes of the girl that meant more to him than anything in the world, there was confusion in those eyes but he could see a spark. She wanted him but wasn't sure if it was because of the ing or if it was genuine. Take your time Sakura-chan, he said softly. I I don't know what's going on you're both the same as before but you're way different, and what I see when you look at me it's kind of scary, Sakura admitted. Naruto nodded, I want there to be an S. Sakura-chan it's an even bigger dream than my wanting to be Hokage. Sakura gently played with his jacket sleeve, what if there was another girl who wanted you as well? Hanada, the orange-haired Saiyan stated causing her to widen her eyes, I've gone through a lot of changes Sakura-chan, in the last few hours some I'm willing to tell you though you probably won't believe, heck I wouldn't believe it but it happened. Tell me please, Sakura gently begged, do you want Hanada-chan to join us? Naruto asked and only got a nod, with a soft smile the Saiyan leaned in again began another deep and again Sakura moaned into it. Sasuke Uchiha began to wake feeling the back of his neck throbbing and he was in a particularly bad mood. He kept his eyes shut and didn't move sensing two people in the room with him, judging by the faint breathing he could tell they were both female, one was the person he begun to hate almost as much as his brother, mostly for her total lack of loyalty to her own clan. Well that's done. Dadbane, a cheerful sounding female voice stated closer to him. Orochimaru is so sloppy, honestly using a corruption seal, with a venom based chakra boosting seal, and a subliminal mental seal, would have turned my poor godson into either a raving lunatic or a vegetable. I shouldn't be surprised though that Baka couldn't seal his way out of the Chunin exams when he was genin according to Mito Obasan. Sasuke cracked his eye open to see who referred to him as their godchild. What he saw was arguably the most beautiful woman he ever seen in his life, the long red hair and violet-colored eyes, athletic curves hidden underneath the skin-tight kunoichi outfit. Her face while cheerful looked vaguely familiar, like he seen it before. Makoto sighed, will he be alright though? Stress from the seal and whatever corrupting effects had been placed on him are still present can't do anything about that, brain chemistry is not my forte ask Inoichi, dadbame. The redhead stated making the Uchiha male frown slightly at the verbal tick, which was remarkably similar to the one Naruto used. Most likely he is a flight risk, he got a taste of that foul crap and according to Anko, Orochimaru intended it to be addictive so the heaven's curse seal will be used. I essentially forced Sasuke to go cold turkey. I see, if Fugaku hadn't been bad enough instilling him with all the arrogance and elitist bullshit that got our clan in the wars with the Uzumaki and Senju back in Madara Uchiha's day now we got to deal with Orochimaru messing with his mind further outside of the Tsukuyomi that Itachi nailed him with before leaving, 
I'm surprised Lord Hokage even allowed him to be a shinobi I'm sure he's not mentally right for it, Makoto stated causing anger to rise in the Uchiha male. What do I do Kashina-chan? Regardless of the circumstances I still love my sons, Makoto frowned sadly. Though I may have given him the impression that I hate him, because of his father. Kashina chuckled sadly, still tactful as ever I see, is it any wonder why I did all planning when we pulled those pranks? The Uchiha matriarch pouted turning her head, so I suck at tactics, I had Minato-kun and Tuchi for that on my team. The redhead snickered before giving the other woman a sad smile, I'm not one to give advice on raising kids, Makoto-chan. I never got to raise my Sochi, I died remember and not once since being revived have I not regretted what happened to my son. The redhead had tears in her eyes. Naruto is ever right to hate Minato-kun and I but he doesn't if anything because of the memories he absorbed through Vegeta-sama he said he understood where we were coming from, gave us both hugs, she then giggled, Sasuke raised a mental eyebrow at the mention of this Vegeta. But he did punch his father in the gut. Makoto crossed her arms over her chest looking depressed, he forgave me as well, after the third explained to him the reasons why I wasn't allowed to raise him after your deaths, the Uchiha matriarch began sniffle, h he forgave me how can anyone be that compassionate or forgiving. Kashina wiped her own tears away. I guess he inherited his grandfather's soul. My dad was always like that. I bet he forgave Kumo as he lay dying after they attacked my home village. The women held a companionable silence while Kashina went about cleaning up. Sasuke, however, held an even lower opinion of Naruto now than he did before. Forgiveness and compassion, I knew the Dobi was weak, but this just shows much. I'll never forgive that woman for abandoning me and father, or condoning Itachi's actions. But the Dobi's mother got rid of the seal and now I'm weak again I'll leave the village once I become Chunin. This place is for the weak anyway, all I need is to kill one of the stupid fangirls to get Mangeku Sharingan, I would kill the annoying pink haired one but I'm not strong enough to take on the Dobi right now. Speaking of which who is this Vegeta and what did he give Naruto to make him so powerful even I could feel it coming off of him in waves. You awake Gaki. Kashina lightly tapped the male Uchiha on the forehead causing him to scowl and open his eyes. Wow, really grumpy when you wake up, yeah he's definitely Fugaku kid, the woman stated in a cheerful chirp, reminding him so much of her annoying son. HN, Sasuke grunted. Okay Makoto he's all yours, the grumpy Gus, the redhead pouted. Yeesh, the Uzumaki woman picked up her sealing brushes and left the room. This left an infuriated son and a chagrined mother behind one glaring and the other raising her eyes letting out a tired sigh. I hate you, Sasuke growled Sharingan activated the tomos spinning wildly. Makoto closed her eyes activating her own full evolved Sharingan, you are my son and I do love you regardless of whose sperm was donated to conceive. But know this Sochi, if you so much as think of running off to Orochimaru I will not hesitate to track you down and kill you, he will not get the Sharingan that is a promise. I'll make one of my own, when I'm finished with Itachi you will be next, Sasuke stated coldly. Don't start something you won't be able to finish Sochi, because I guarantee there will be a lot of obstacles that will get in your way. I don't shy away from my friends and I'd gladly take their help in a heartbeat, Makoto's own tomo's begun to spin. Don't go this route, Sochi please it only ends in tragedy for both sides. You turned your back on the clan and were willing to raise that Dobi that makes you both a traitor and weak. My mother died during the Uchiha massacre loyal and in her proper place. You were nothing to me, the Uchiha male explained. The corner of Makoto's eyes teared up slightly but that was all her face looked like it was chiseled from stone, I see, very well I'll leave you alone Sasuke Uchiha, seems I was mistaken on who my Sochi was, turns out he died during the massacre as well, farewell. With that the Uchiha matriarch left the room without a backwards glance however tears fell from the woman's eyes as she walked down the hall. Damn you Fugaku, I hope you're burning in whatever hell you are in. XXX flashback two hours before Minato and Kashina were waiting in the shadows while the civilian and shinobi council members began taking their seats, what caused Minato to frown most was the amount of civilians on the civilian council it had increased by three since he had been Hokage glancing over at his wife who was clenching and unclenching her hands. This meeting is called to order, Sarutobi stated puffing on his pipe, a miracle has occurred. What the demon died in the forest of death, 
one of the civilians stated looking hopeful only for a second then his head came off his shoulders and a fountain of blood exploded from his neck. Everyone jumped back fear evident in the civilian's eyes, Sarutobi sighed, Kashina? Said woman appeared in the light followed by her husband both glaring at the civilian council. The woman question bent down and wiped her kodachi on the corpse before sheathing the weapon. Next person uses that derogatory statement about my son again I'll fillet them alive with a dull rusty kanai. Why dull? Minato asked with a raised an eyebrow. Kashina smiled sweetly at her husband, because it'll hurt more Minato-kun, you silly. That's Kushi-chan all right, Sume barked with a smirk, the question is how? Blame our son, Kashina stated with a sad smile, and before you bakas, she glared at the majority of the civilian council who looked like they were going to protest. Get any ideas of bad-mouthing him or denying he did such a thing, the fox has been dead for thirteen years. Matter of fact it died two hours after it had been sealed inside Naruto, she turned to the shinobi council. How many of you remember the huge surge of chakra that night, she then turned to civilians. How many of you ingrates felt the intense pressure in the air that night? That was the death of the fox. Mebuki tentatively raised a hand, I remember that night, it felt like everything was pushing me to the ground for a brief moment and it woke up my Sakura-chan. Troublesome. Lord Hokage why weren't we informed or why didn't you have Inoichi do a mind walk? Shikaku Nara asked, they all heard a meaty smack as the old Hokage slapped himself on the forehead. The old man went senile for thirteen years, Kashina snorted crossing her arms glaring at the old Hokage. Serutobi nodded sadly, I should have then Naruto would have never endured the hardship he did. Your lucky Vegeta Sama stated all the physical abuse Sochi endured gave him what is called a Zenkai boost, Minato explained. What would that be? Choza asked. For every assault Naruto endured or near death experience he had, when he recovered actually made him stronger. If the academy hadn't sabotaged his shinobi training, he would have been on par with me after his second year of the academy, Minato explained, causing the civilian both internally sigh in relief and cringe in fear as most realize they were actively helping the demon get stronger. Homura leaned forward, this isn't the point of this meeting, but I see the real point and it's null and void anyway none of us on the shinobi council will deny who you are Minato, Kashina simply too much evidence on hand to say otherwise. My question is what happens now, will you retake the mantle of Hokage, Minato? Not so sure I want to, the blonde former Hokage states, I entrusted my son to the village to be raised with love and affection, all he got was mental abuse and scorn on good days, with assaults and assassination attempts on bad days. I'll need a lot of convincing. The civilian council glanced at each other looking desperate mostly because they knew that for their beloved fourth to retake his position it would involve the demon in some way. Mebuki however snorted in disgust at her fellow council members, she harbored nothing but sadness at her inability to protect Naruto, she had even been disappointed with her daughter's actions against the orange-haired boy. What would you like, Minato-sama? She asked aloud getting glares from her fellow council members. Public apologies would be nice for a start then we work on restitution for my son. And finally the civilian council removes two more people from this governing body I don't how there are twelve civilians and ten shinobi council members, there should only be the clan heads with the two advisors for the shinobi side, and ten civilians eight representing the civilians branches three for trade, three for commerce, and three for health and well-being, with Danzo as civilian advisor where did the other two come from, Minato asked. We represent the voice of the daimyo, the fat female representative haughtily. In other words these are false titles no brought in by Danzo to try and undermine the Hokage by forcing to compromise too much, no doubt to protect Naruto, Minato sighed heavily crossing his arms glancing at Kashina who was glaring at Danzo. I will take back the mantle of Hokage. What if we don't want you back? asked one of the more quieter council members. Makoto frowned noting his voice was off, she activated her Sharingan and looked around the room. Hiyashi can you activate your Byakugan I can see chakra distortions in the room but can't pinpoint them. What are you doing we made a rules about this, the fat woman stated glaring at the Uchiha, who are you anyway? Makoto Uchiha, the female Uchiha smirked at the shock in civilian faces. No I did not die with my stupid power hungry clan that was a blood clone. Hiyashi your Byakugan please? A feigned nod he activated his own Keki Jenke and what he saw shocked him, Danzo, he growled glaring at the man, what have you done? 
Before the old man could react several chakra chains encircled him preventing him from moving. The man grunted glaring at the source, so it's true you have one of the sage of the six paths gifts Kashina. The Uzumaki, the Senju, and the Uchiha are all distantly related to him Danzo so it shouldn't surprise you. Now what do you see Hiyashi? Kashina asked. Sharingan implanted all up and down his left arm, and one in his left eye, the Hyuga clan head stated in anger and disgust. Makoto's own eyes narrowing in rage as they morphed into her Mangeku Sharingan surprising everyone. How dare you, I may despise my clan's arrogance and elitist attitude but to have my son murder them to stop a coup d'etat and for you to swoop in and take what is not yours, a second later a flash of pitch black flames ignited Danzo who screamed. D-D-I-I-I-E-E-E. -E -E. This caused everyone near the old warhawk to jump back in fright. Kashina dropped her chains then ran over pulling out a seal tag the moment it came in contact with the flames and burning corpse they vanished. HMPH didn't tell us you had that Miko-chan, Kashina pouted. Makoto winced as blood leaked from the corner of her right eye she closed it taking out a rag, it was activated when Lord Third told me of your death Kushi-chan, the grief of losing my two best friends was too much for me. Sarutobi sighed heavily putting his hands under his chin closing his eyes thinking once his thoughts began to sort however he smirked, with both councils possibly being compromised I motion that it should be disbanded until evaluations are done on the mental competency of said council this will be my last act as Hokage. And as my first act as returning Hokage I'm putting the motion forward immediately, you will all report to Ibiki in the morning, Minato smirks at Inoichi who groans. Yes even you Yamanaka, your old boss is perfectly suited for this. Only few civilians complained this time mostly because they all felt utterly confused even Mebuki who wondered if her own thoughts had been invaded. She stood up and walked over to Kashina, I apologize to you Kashina-sama I tried to curb my daughter's abuses on your son. Kashina simply giggled and waved it off, please if I had a chance to raise Naruto, he would have gotten a lot more lumps on his head for being a baka than the ones your daughter gave him. If anything I'm going to be thanking her, she kept him in line. According to Vegeta-sama she reminded him of his own wife and knows she'll be good for him. Mebuki smiled faintly, I'm glad there is no animosity towards my daughter Kashina-sama. Kashina put an arm around the blonde woman smirking, meh, water under the bridge Mebuki-chan, datbane. Besides if my son has his way we'll be in laws by the time he turns 16. Mebuki nodded and sighed, rather it be your son than Makoto-sama's he strikes me as unstable. Baka. Kashina muttered thinking of her godson. Patting the blonde woman's shoulder she walked over to Makoto ushering the Uchiha matriarch out of the council chambers. Minato-kun see you at home, I'm going to take Miko-chan out to get her drunk I better see you in your boxers when we get home. Makoto blinked, what are you doing Kashina? You need a drink to get your mind of what you just did, and you need a threesome to unwind and I'm more than willing to share, dadbane, Kashina giggled watching Makoto's nose explode in a fountain of blood. Still perving on my husband, Miko-chan. Um, Kashina? Minato asked looking uncertain, what is this all about? The redhead rubbed the back of her head much like what her son did, there's too much drama Minato-kun, plus with how things have been since we got revived. I want to help my best female friend find some comfort, dadbane. But a threesome? Makoto asked blushing. We're not part of Jiraiya-sensei's pervy books, Kushi-chan. Meh. Details I want hot steamy with my husband and best friend besides we're still kind of the last of our lines Miko-chan. Itachi is off doing whatever I doubt he's sowing his wild oats and as far as I know Sasuke is either going to get himself killed or is gay so no help for you on that front. We're both still young and I love to give my son a baby brother or sister, she leaned biting Makoto's ear gently while whispering. And I bet you still have that fantasy about me and Minato-kun, don't you, dadbane? Minato sighed shaking his head, he knew he couldn't argue with his wife regardless of how sudden this all was. When did this start? He muttered to himself. Three words Minato-kun, Clan Restoration Act, Kashina stated with a shrug. Naruto-kun falls under it, Miko-chan falls under it, I fall under it. After a few seconds Minato nodded, I thought you and Mikoto already fulfilled that, both of you have male heirs. True but in Miko-chan's case her heirs aren't viable, one is borderline unstable and the other is listed as a rogue nin. While I have an heir to the Uzumaki clan I want to give you one for your clan, 
Minato-kun, the redhead sighed heavily. That and I can't raise Naruto anymore he grew up without us, I love him with all my heart but he doesn't really need us. I feel like we're just in the way. I'm sure he doesn't think that, Makoto stated. He'll probably even think us invading his life will at first feel like a luxury to him, caring about his every little moment, like leaving the house, cooking for him, making sure he dresses right, asking him to be safe on missions, Minato explained. All right I get it, and that is only one motivation for the CRA, the other is I want my best friend to be happy. Fugaku was a great asshole and wherever he is I'm hoping some demon spawn is raping him right now. So what I'm saying is, Kashina paused looping an arm around Makoto looking up at her husband. I want Miko-chan to be my sister wife Minato-kun. Minato knew he wouldn't win this argument matter of fact the only argument he did win backfired on him, he turned to his longtime teammate on Team Jiraiya, he had to admit in terms of beauty Makoto was on par with Kashina, he had always thought so just Kashina had always been number one in his mind. Still with Makoto no longer burdened by the Uchiha elders it was solely up to her now. This is something you'll have to decide Makoto. I can't win an argument with Kashina to save my life and the one I did win made things worse. The red head was torn between smirking and looking depressed which made her expressions the Uchiha matriarch thought kind of funny. Allow me to wait and make a decision until after I talk with Sasuke again I want to clear the air between us if you'll let me. Take as much time as you need, Minato smiled before a tick marked appeared above his right eye. How long have you been there Jiraiya sensei? The two women turned to see the perverted toad sage crouched on the window seal scribbling away in his research book. Judging by the amount of notes he's taking and the trickle of blood on his lip I'd say since I made the threesome comment, Kashina sighed shaking her head then began cracking her knuckles in preparation to dish out punishment. It's been a long time pervy sage let's see if I can remember the art of putting you in traction, dadbane. Makoto followed her sharingan spinning wildly. Yes it has been a while hasn't it pervy sensei time to scream like a girl, she smiled overly sweetly. Crap, the toad sage muttered stuffing his research book into his jacket before leaping from the window. Come back here and take your licks like a man, Kashina growled leaping from the window Makoto following her. Minato sighed, glad someone hasn't changed much, as several anbu in the council room chuckled. XXX and flashback Makoto walked quietly into the room she designated herself to and felt two gentle hands on her shoulders looking up Kashina gave her a sad smile gently pulling her into an embrace. The Uchiha matriarch promptly let all her build up angst and frustration pour out into deep racking sobs burying her head into her best friend's shoulder. Too far gone. Kashina whispered getting a faint nod. I'm sorry Miko-chan I had hoped he'd be like Sochi. Makoto took a few seconds to gather her breath wiping her eyes angrily, he's too much like his father, I even suspect he'll ignore my warning. First moment he gets he'll go looking for Orochimaru, she replied sadly. Would he be different if I actually raised him? I don't know like I said before I'm not the best person to ask about raising kids Miko-chan my one shot at it to date and I died on him, your chance to raise him was shot down by circumstance but look at how well Itachi turned out for the most part being raised by you for 7 years granted he's been branded a traitor for doing something for the good of the village but still he turned out pretty well outside that, Kashina explained. I take it Minato-kun can't officially remove Itachi's missing nin status, the Uchiha woman asked. No he's spying on this Akatsuki group and if they found out might put him in danger however the hunter nins have been called off except for two and they've been told only to appear like they are hunting him to alleviate suspicion, ya know one of pervy sage's backup plans, the redhead explained. Makoto walked over and sat gingerly emotionally she knew she was a mess, her son disowning her. Must be nice to have a son that loves you even after all the shit that's come to light. Remarkable is more like it. Kashina said sitting next to her friend putting arm around her again. I was being serious Miko-chan earlier, I want you to with me and Minato-kun. Would it be so bad to get Naruto's approval first I already lost my son in all intents and purposes, I really don't want to alienate my godson too, the dark haired woman stated. Yeah be a good idea, hopefully I won't be as awkward this time, Kashina giggled slightly. Of course if he's making out with that pink haired girl we might have to wait. Sakura stood at the entrance to the medical wing dormitories, about to go in to see if her crush was alright. Opening the door her heart froze in fear, 
the look of unbridled hatred coming from Sasuke made her step back. What do you want? The Uchiha male asked in laced venom. I I just w wanted to s c if you were okay. Sasuke kun, the rosette haired girl replied nervously suddenly feeling like this was a bad idea. Okay. Sasuke drawled out. I am anything but okay. I find out I have not one but two traitors to my clan. That Makoto and my brother, the power I was given robbed from me by the Dobie's ing mother. Sasuke stood up stalking toward the girl Sharingan active and spinning wildly. Now I have a ing little whore like you asking stupid questions, I'll show you how okay I am, before Sakura could react Sasuke lunged at her and wrapped his hands around her throat. I should have done this before, this village no longer deserves the Uchiha's bloodline, he growled and squeezing. Sakura tried to pry his hands away from her throat but his anger and increasing insanity made him far too strong. Naruto help. As tears began to flow from her eyes Sakura felt both betrayal and heartbreak that her longtime crush was actively trying to kill her. A second later Sasuke's hands became limp and he slumped backward feeling weak the rosette haired girl was about to fall forward onto the bastard only for two warm arms catch her and embrace her. Not going to say it, but I think you got the gist of it. H he tried to k kill me. Sakura sobbed out turning around and burying her face into Naruto's shoulder. Naruto glared down at the unconscious Uchiha, he couldn't do anything about him until after the exams as much as he would like to. One there were no witnesses and regardless of the fact his father was now the Hokage again he doubted he could justify killing the asshole for trying kill his mate yet. He gently rubbed Sakura's back trying to soothe her before picking her up bridal style to carry her away. Like I said he doesn't deserve you, Sakura-chan, whispered in her ear in her forehead. I always wanted to do that. He chuckled faintly feeling her tense slightly. You okay? Sakura's emotional distress seemed to magnify with Naruto's last statement, the image of a kind-looking Sasuke stating her wildest dreams and then overlaying them with a possible hanged Naruto. Remnants of her broken heart shattered completely at the realization that Sasuke had never said those words that it had been Naruto in a henge all this time. Her sobs increased in tempo her image of the Uchiha permanently destroyed. Before she could wallow in any more grief and sadness she felt Naruto sit down on a bed in one of the barracks, gently reach up caressing her cheek. Opening her eyes seeing the unconditional love in the orange-haired Saiyan's eyes the sobbing had subsided into sniffles as he held her gaze. And Naruto. I said it in the forest you are my Sakura, I will not let anyone hurt you physically and I will always be here to punish those who do hurt you, that is my promise of a lifetime, the orange-haired Saiyan stated leaning in and capturing her lips in a. After a long bout of tender s he could sense through her energy that her melancholy was lifting ever so slightly. H how can you care so much about me after all the stuff I did to you in the academy all the violent turn downs, I treated you worse than Sasuke treated me, and you still want me, why? Sakura asked. Naruto smirked, cause you're feisty, you're not submissive. Being submissive while nice can be on occasions enabling. I am a prince of the village and I need someone who can smack me down when I'm being a baka, let's face it Sakura-chan there are going to be times when I can be a real baka. Sakura giggled sliding her arms around his neck, I suppose that's true, but um, what about Hinata you have to know she has had a crush on you since she was five, she stated looking worried. I know that now, Naruto sighed looking a bit guilty, though before I didn't I always thought she had some sort of chronic fainting disease or something. I didn't realize I was the cause. What are you going to do about it? Sakura asked again worried. The orange-haired Saiyan let a slow sigh, how much do you know about the Uzumaki clan or the Namikaze clan? Um, the first Hokage married a woman named Mito Uzumaki didn't he, but that's it, the rosette replied. Yeah gave birth to a son whose wife had Tsunade and Nawaki, making both my cousins, Naruto explained. Now let me explain to you what happened in the forest after Orochimaru hit me with the five-pronged seal. And he did including his life before they became teammates by the end of it, Sakura was in tears both in joy and sadness, joy at Naruto having his parents back, secretly thanking Vegeta for his surprising kindness and her tears of sadness at how Naruto's life had been for 13 years her own abuse contributing to his misery. Naruto wiped her tears away with his thumbs. With all this being said, I probably fall under the CRA sure my mom will probably want to give me a brother or sister but that would only two Uzumaki and Namikaze heirs need at least four or more to make a viable restoration of a clan, I think. 
Sakura shook her head, it's no less than six no more than eight I remember the chapter on it in the academy. The last clan that needed it was Shino's clan his great grandfather had three wives if I recall, same with his great granduncle, they struggled at first mostly because of the kikai insects, she shuddered. Girls don't like bugs as a general rule unless they were raised around them. Naruto felt the rosette shift slightly sliding off his lap moving to simply sit next to him. Do you want to try being a couple, maybe bring Hinata in? Looking up into his eyes before nodding silently her feeling a lot of the emotional weight had lifted from her shoulders, how would you approach her? She's the heiress of her clan, Sakura-chan she's probably known about the CRA since she was four. While I don't want to exploit her submissive nature, it may come into play, Naruto sighed. Then there is her confidence issues, that needs to be addressed and I know most of it stems from her clan's elders. Sakura nods, she should be in the tower by now. Naruto stood up extending his hand which Sakura took and they set off to find Hinata and her team. Didn't take long they found them two rooms over talking to their sensei. Yo, Naruto up his hand in greeting. N Naruto kun, Hinata blushed, Kurenai turned along with Kiba and Shino. Hey Kurenai sensei can Sakura chan and I borrow, Hinata chan for a moment? The orange haired Saiyan asked. Hinata blushed images appearing in her mind, yes. Please borrow me Naruto-kun. Kurenai smiled faintly nodding as Naruto walked up taking the girl by the hand and leading her out her face scarlet. Sakura just shook her head following the two. What was that all about? Kiba asked then glanced down hearing Akamaru whimper. What's with you? XXX and flashback Kashina giggled hearing her Sochi talking apparently to the Hyuga heiress. She glanced inside and what she saw caused her to raise an eyebrow. What? Came Makoto's question. Sochi may be ahead of the curve Miko-chan, the redhead gestured to the cracked door. Makoto peeked in and saw Naruto talking to the Hyuga heiress while councilwoman Haruno's daughter who was sitting next to the heiress, whose face was getting redder with each passing moment before she passed out. Naruto sighed looking at the fainted Hinata, she took it pretty well, don't cha think, he chuckled. Having first apologized to her for not realizing she liked him, she then stuttered out that it was okay. He then explained to her what he explained to Sakura about what happened in the forest and what will likely happen once the second exam was done. Finally he brought up the clan restoration act and asked her if she wanted to join Sakura in trying to be a couple, that is when she promptly fainted. Sakura shook her head ruefully, just about how she takes everything regarding you. I can't believe I didn't see it before, Naruto sighed rubbing his head before shifting. Not nice to spy on me, Kasen, he smirked. Hee hee, Kashina and Makoto walked into the room one looking unrepentant with a huge smirk on her face while the other held a healthy blush at being caught. So a step ahead of the game, Sochi. More or less, he glanced at Sakura whose eyes and mouth were wide in shock. Sakura. Sakura shook her head pointing at Kashina, T that's your cousin. Yep, that's me, Kashina chirped rubbing the back of her head. You're Sakura huh? The woman stepped up close and leaned forward examining her potential daughter-in-law the very one her son had such praise for hearing the scary similar background they shared. A little out of shape but nothing some good hard training can't overcome for the both of them, she stated seeing Hinata waking up. I'm sure they'll make excellent additions to the clan, Naruto-kun. The orange-haired Saiyan smiled, how are you Makoto Obasan? Makoto teared up. I haven't been a very good godmother Naruto-kun and I was a terrible mother to Sasuke and Itachi. I abandoned them because of their father, instead of bringing them with me like I should have I left a blood clone to raise them. You um, w what's a a blood clone? Hanada asked, it is a clone created using chakra and a pint of person's blood, the blood sustains the chakra preventing it from dissipating and it lasts two days after it dies. It has the same overall properties as the shadow clone in that it retains information after it dies, Kashina explained. It also is one of Makoto's personally created jutsus. That's awesome Makoto Obasan, can you teach me that? Naruto asked looking eager. The Uchiha woman smiled faintly, I might, there is one thing I, I need to ask you if Kushi-chan doesn't interrupt. Kashina pouted but nodded, W would you object if I entered into a relationship with your father? Naruto crossed his arms in mock thought, before snorting, I'd be a hypocrite if I did Makoto Obasan. 
I just asked both Sakura-chan and Hinata-chan if they wanted to be in a relationship with me, he smirked hearing Hinata, eep, glancing at said girl whose face was bright red. Kashina giggled, now I know why I recognized her, she's Hitomi's daughter right? Snapping her fingers looking at Makoto. Yes, Hitomi and Hiyashi had Hinata shortly after you died, Makoto explained. The redhead giggled, she was so much fun growing up, dadbane. Sighing Makoto turned to Hinata who looked confused. Kashina loved to tease your mother to the point of her passing out from blood loss from it either rushing to her face or coming out of her nose after one of Kushi-chan lewd comments. It broke her out of her shyness, Kashina stated with a pout. Poor girl needed it could you imagine her wedding night with Hiyashi if she kept fainting talk about total disaster, dadbane. Hinata eeped again then perverted Hinata appeared. Ride Naruto-kun while watching Sakura-chan squirm on his face, hum yes. Or better yet Sakura-chan while she's underneath us, Naruto takes us both. Hinata's nose was bleeding causing Kashina to raise an eyebrow shaking her head. The Hyuga heiress blushed again pushing her index fingers together, T thank you Kashina-sama, F for A accepting me. Kashina smiled sadly, I had nothing to do with it, this is all Naruto I wasn't able to raise him like I dreamed of. I died on him. As much as he has forgiven me and his father I still feel like I failed him. The orange-haired Saiyan put his arms around his mother, never you weren't separated from me by choice you were stolen from me by whoever that masked Uchiha was. And whoever he was I'm going to slaughter him if I ever see him, Dad Bayo. The other three females all smiled at this exchange, my Sochi is awesome, Kashina smiled giving the other girls a thumbs up. XXX Capsule Corporation age 779 Bulma was currently fitting the screen to her new device wiping her brow, Vegeta do you have a minute I have something to show you. What is it, I'm training, came the irritated question. Just come up to my workshop, you baka, Bulma growled. The prince of Saiyans often wondered why he fell in love with the infuriating woman he could only begin to guess. Walking from his gravity trainer to the workshop had him pass the main living area where his son was busy with his recent fling of the month, snorting in disgust. As much as I find Kakarot's eldest Gaki to be a wimp at least he settle on a mate, Trunks is more his mother than he is me what a waste. He snarled opening the door to the workshop watching his wife tinker with some communication device. What is it? Bulma turned cleaning up the smudge on her cheek, I finally figured it out, I made an interdimensional communicator. Looking confused Vegeta crossed his arms, explain in a language I can understand. Bulma grunted, fine, basically with this thing we can give this to the boy you gave your powers to and keep tabs on him, you baka. All we need is Goku to use his instant transmission and go there to give it to the boy. Why didn't you say so, Vegeta growled, I just did, the blue haired woman snapped back, arg. Vegeta stepped up and looked at the device smirking slightly. He loved it when Bulma got angry it made her really why and turned him on. Interesting, he walked over and locked the door before turning back to his wife. I'll go look for Kakarot tomorrow. Why not today? Bulma asked. I have something else in mind, Vegeta walked up to her. Bulma had seen that look before on her birthday after the fight with Beerus, oh is my prince in the mood, she gave him a saucy smile. Do you need to ask, the prince stated causing the woman to giggle. Three hidden rain genin, the rookie nine, team guy, the sand siblings, and Kabuto's team stood in the center of a large arena staring up at three shinobi many have never seen before. The first standing to the right caused Sasuke to glare heatedly at. Was a fairly beautiful woman with shoulder length black hair, dressed in janin attire only instead of wearing just the uchiha as she did before on the back of her flak jacket it was replaced with a new elaborate insignia, the uzumaki swirl with four lightning bolts striking inward toward the Uchiha fan, the bolts representing the Namikaze clan signifying her recent addition into the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans while still holding true to her Uchiha blood. On the left was a woman with unparalleled beauty dressed in a red skin-tight kunoichi stocking, shoulder harness, and wielding two kodachi the Uzumaki and Namikaze mixed insignias on her back and shoulders she got a welcome smile from her son and his two girlfriends. The one in the middle however gave a certain disguised sonin pause and fear, he wore a janin outfit, with a long white sleeveless cloak with red flames on the bottom and the word forth written along the back. Who the heck is that? Came Kiba question, where's the third Hokage? 
He re-entered retirement a lot of things have happened in the last five days that you probably haven't been made aware of, I guess it is a considered a miracle to some and a curse from the heavens to others. My name is Minato Namikaze 13 years ago I died sealing the nine-tailed biju into my son, most of you even know him, Minato paused chuckling. Hell I've been told he looks a lot like me, just has his mother's chin and cute little nose. Baka T-O-U-S-A-N. Naruto growled thrusting his fist out at his father. Everyone turned to the whiskered Mark orange-haired Saiyan the rookie nine and team guy minus Sakura, Sasuke, and Hinata looked on in shock. W Wade how are you alive eh and I is Naruto really your son? Ino asked nervously having been told on numerous occasions by her parents in the past not to pick on Naruto but ignored them because everyone else was doing it. To answer your first question Ms Yamanaka I'm afraid that is classified, to answer the second yes, Naruto is indeed my son, Minato explained. As for the nine tails due to circumstances I didn't even know had occurred I inadvertently sealed someone in with the fox and this person for all intents and purposes obliterated the nine tails. That can't be possible to kill a biju you'd have practically destroy the planet, no one on this earth has that power, Baki stated. The person I sealed into Naruto wasn't from this earth he was pulled into our world through some sort of time space jutsu. Minato stated with a sigh not sure why he would reveal such things but he felt Naruto's friends needed to know he wasn't a threat to them. The fox is dead and has been for 13 years. What of the person that killed the fox is he still sealed inside Naruto? Shino asked. A very perceptive person you are Shino. No the man died and was resurrected in the same way my wife and I were. Minato smirked internally purposely leaving out the fact that his son got all the biju slaying power when the man died. Minato-kun, let's get on with the closing speech thingy, Kushina pouted. The blonde Hokage sighed shaking his head, not time yet Kushi-chan I count 21 bodies, that needs to go down unless there are people willing to drop out, Kabuto was the sole person to do so, leaving 20 left. Okay Hayate, looks like you're up. Asterisk cough understood Hokage-sama, a man walked up looking a little worse for wear bags under his eyes and a pale waxy complexion. To thin the numbers we will be having a preliminary one-on-one -on -one tournament, hopefully to get the number down to 10 or less. Orochimaru stood in the shadows seething as Kabuto appeared, our plans will need to change, there is no way the invasion will succeed, Suna will likely pull out now out of fear. Yes, the fourth Hokage being resurrected in some way and within the last five days, I don't understand how that is possible. Kabuto stated looking confused. The snake Sanin frowned going through the events in the last week that could have caused such a drastic change in events he then remembered during his little meeting with Anko he felt something akin to compressed killer intent centered around where he left Sasuke and his teammates, with the recent revelation that the fox had been killed and the only thing sealed in the Jinchuriki was an unknown male with the power to kill a biju, left him with only one theory. When he slapped the five-prong seal on the Namikaze Gaki he started the chain of events or hastened them. Unless it's a ploy of Serutobi senseis in some way do I take the chance, the Sanin thought a moment, we alter it slightly and form our forces to proceed with caution, and I want to Yuya to stay behind. Little did Orochimaru know that Karen Uzumaki and Kinsuchi were currently spilling what they knew about Orochimaru's operation and invasion plans without even being coaxed, both having concern for their shared friend, one having been rescued from a beating and possible rape and the other finding out she had family in Konoha. Shino watched as his opponent dropped looking like he was wasting away, your genjutsu failed, why because my kikai insects detected the illusion and negated them while you stood back confidently they snuck in behind you and began eating away your chakra. In the future you will learn not to assume anything. Winner of the match Shino Aburame, Hayate stated as medic Nin appeared to help the aim Genin as said Genin passed out. Naruto looked on board out of his mind, everything seemed to move almost in slow motion for him. During each match he could easily find 60 different holes in each person's fighting style, Sasuke's he could see he left his back far too open, Tenten was entirely to weapon based any decent long range jutsu could cripple her and did as Tamari systematically destroyed her, with her wind based jutsu. Shikamaru was probably the only one he couldn't really get a read on but that was because the lazy genius ended the match quickly. The puppet user relied way too much on his dolls and probably sucked royally with taijutsu. Sakura as much as he loved her, the academy taijutsu just didn't suit her it made her look awkward, she needed something a little more up close and personal. 
He had been teaching her how to bring out her key but barely three days of instruction was not enough so she and Ino ended up in a draw for their match, but mostly it was Sakura apologizing to Ino for ruining their friendship over someone not worth their time. All right, look at that Akamaru we got a breeze fight, Kiba stated ignoring his companion whimpering. Naruto glanced at the sign and smirked jumping up to the railing then jumping down. He walked into the center of the room next to the proctor crossing his arms waiting for Kiba who was having trouble with Akamaru. What's wrong with you this'll be easy, I don't care if he's the son of the fourth Hokage. He's still a dobi. Naruto snorted glancing up at Kiba, maybe you should leave your master alone Kiba it's obvious he doesn't want to fight. Kiba growled jumping down, oh that is it I'm going to wipe the floor with you dobi. Doubtful, looking up at the Akamaru Naruto smirked again. You should have your pet trained more Akamaru he's getting quite rabid, maybe someone should knock him down a few pegs. Well since I'm here I'll volunteer, but know this Kiba you'll never lay a hand on me. Kiba scoffed. Fine then I guess I'll use my feet. The wild looking teen dropped into his family's taijutsu stance while Naruto hadn't moved an inch arms still crossed over his chest watching Kiba with a bored expression. GGGRRRR. Kiba charged forward. Fang over fang, his body moving in a horizontal tornado toward Naruto everyone gasped as Kiba seemed to go right through the orange-haired Saiyan. When the wild-looking boy skid to a halt he looking worried afraid he accidentally killed Naruto only to turn and see Naruto hadn't moved and completely unscathed. WW what I hit you. Strike one, Kiba. I'll give you two more chances to hit me and then you're out, the whisker marked Saiyan stated. Growling in anger he performed another fang over fang skidding to a halt and turning around he saw again that Naruto was not only unharmed but he actually yawned. Is that it I must say Kiba this is beginning to bore me. The Inazuka heir was beside himself with rage and a small amount of fear he hit Naruto his best jutsu twice and nothing happened. Running forward this time Kiba launched into a series of strikes and kicks none of which connected. How, is, this, possible? Kiba gasped taking two steps back. Naruto shrugged, simple you're too weak to challenge me and that was strike three by the way, reaching up with his index finger and appeared to lightly tap Kiba on the forehead. The, tap, sent Kiba flying into the far wall after he slumped to the ground Hayate ran over to checking him. He's alright, I held back a lot, most he'll have will be a few cracked ribs and maybe a concussion. Naruto quietly jumped back up to the railing landing next to Kurinai and her students. Sorry, Kiba kind of set me off. I it's okay and Naruto-kun, Hanada replied giving him a shy smile, while Shino simply grunted adjusting his sunglasses. With a slight shake of his head Naruto stepped closer to Hanada who blushed lightly, you got such a pretty voice Hanada-chan, need to work on not stuttering, he smiled softly causing the girl to turn redder if that was possible. Before she could say anything Naruto brought her in and gave her a gentle. N Naruto kun ed me, h he ed me, Hanada swooned before falling forward into Naruto's arms. Soccer aside, really need to break her of that. Yep, wedding night will get really boring if she keeps passing out after every, Naruto chuckles. Sakura snorts, what about each article of clothing she'll have to remove? Hanada woke up long enough to hear them say that before she fell backward with from a nosebleed, oh Naruto-kun, she whispered. Hanada-chan, Naruto shook his head a smile still on his face then turned to Sakura, might have to help her in the clothing removal department, Sakura-chan. Rolling her eyes Sakura gently fanned the Hyuga heiress, oh no, she whispered dread in her voice. Hanada slowly woke to see her name and the last person she wanted to face. Neji Nisan. Hanada whispered nervously. Watching the glare Hanada was getting from her cousin Naruto stepped forward gently putting his hands on her shoulders in her forehead, win or lose Hanada-chan prove to him that you are not weak. The Hyuga heiress nodded her face set with determination she walked down the stairs walking up and standing across from her cousin. You are fated to lose here Hanada, Neji sneered. Neji Nisan, shut up, Hanada stated in a surprisingly cool tone sliding into her gentle fist stance. Neji scowled sliding into his stance, fine it seems you'll need to be re-educated in learning your place, Hanada. One simple gesture would be all I need to end the fight Neji Nisan you know that, but you also know I'll never use it cannot bear to cause you or any other branch member pain, 
As one of Naruto-kun's betroths I can ask the Uzumaki clan to find a way to negate the pain-inducing aspects of the caged bird seal and have every member of the clan use it as it was intended to be used, Hanada explained as both she and Neji went into a series of strikes and near misses. You are deluded, the main branch will never accept it, Neji replied. Watching the fight from a distance Naruto had to admire the forms however he noted Hanada had trouble with it, the ridged form seemed to hamper her natural flexibility. With a sigh, she's losing, her form is just too choppy she overextends her arms when she needs to spin and kick, a frown formed. And what makes you an expert on taijutsu forms, Dobi, Sasuke scoffed. Funny you should taunt, wuss, Naruto stated causing the male Uchiha to growl. That guy who killed the biju he gave me all his skills and experiences before he died and was revived, that included all his knowledge in various combat styles. So shut up, I wasn't talking to you. Temei I was talking to Kakashi Sensei and Sakura Chan. Sasuke seethed to himself, clenching and unclenching his hands. How strong did the Dobi become and where can I get that strength? XXX Sun Residence, age 779, Vegeta landed outside Goku home. Looking around, he noted that it was far bigger than it had been before Vital had entered Gohan's life. With her married into the family, the Sun homestead had expanded to include a bigger main house, an apartment for Goten and a small library and office for Gohan to do whatever research that intrigued him. He came to the entrance to the main house and heard Kakarot's woman growling. Looking through the door he saw the woman cleaning like she was in a war. Entering the house he watched her and noticed how tense she was, what is wrong with you? He asked aloud. Chi Chi spun around clutching her duster holding it like a sword, she blinked a moment before she sighed, just cleaning. Sounded more like you were trying to kill your floor, Vegeta snorted. I'm looking for Kakaro. Out, past the radish field, he's training Goten again, Chi Chi stated mournfully walking over and sitting at her dining table. Uptight, moody, and I heard longing I wonder how long it has been since Kakaro mated with her. Vegeta left the house lifting off lazily floating over the radish field having a fond memory of it, drawing radishes to determine who would fight two of Frieza's leftovers. Beyond was a large canyon where he spotted two dots below sparring and wrecking the surrounding the area. Landing just as Goku finished a combo sending Goten flying, Kakaro. Goku fell out of his stance, oh hey Vegeta, what's up? I've come to ask you to use your instant transmission to get me to that shinobi world I died in, Vegeta stated. Um, I need to see it first before I can go there, Goku explained. Blast it, Vegeta softly growled a part of him the more caring part that Bulma helped cultivate and meeting the orange-haired boy helped solidify though he would go to his grave to deny wanting to protect said boy, granted the boy probably didn't need any protection in his world as the strongest being he could sense from inside the boy match that of Zarbin in his transformed state, which was someone Naruto could easily handle. Still the Saiyan prince felt he needed to protect one of his subjects. Thinking quickly through his options maybe talking to one of the Kais. Which of the four Kais runs that realm, Kakaro? Hmm, if it's alternate universe I suppose we'd have to talk the Supreme Kai of Space, she's the sister of the Supreme Kai of Time, and not nearly as cheerful, Goku explained while he was portrayed as a dimwit most of the time. Goku had a fairly decent education during his time in Otherworld on the ways and means of what the Kais protected and just how many there were. He was even offered the job of Supreme Kai from Kabito Kai, seeing as how Goku was already doing that job protecting his realm. Goku wanted to wait until he died of natural causes before he take the job, that way he know Chi Chi would be with him in Otherworld which was his other stipulation. Kabito Kai agreed to it. Um, couldn't we use the Dragon Balls? The Saiyan Prince smacked himself in the head grunting at the pain, Bulma has them at the house, another one of her bingo tournaments she holding for Trunks' birthday this year. Oh yeah, hey? Just hope the god of destruction is still sleeping this time. I'm still not strong enough to beat him, Goku pouted slightly. Only you would train for a rematch against a god, Vegeta snorted. Aside from that, your woman looks tense Kakaro, as both he and Goku took to the air unseen signal from them both to begin flying toward capsule core. Goku waved to Goten who waved back lifting off to head back home. When was the last you mated with her? Goku blushed slightly then started to think, um. He paused in his thoughts. If you're thinking about it, then you clearly don't mate enough with her no wonder she's uptight, Vegeta rolled his eyes. Um, how many times with Bulma? Goku asked. At least twice a week or more depending on her mood, 
the Saiyan prince explained. And she's always in the mood, it wouldn't surprise me if your woman is taking to using her laundry chores to satisfy herself. Goku looked a little chagrined he had been so focused on training to fight the next big threat that would appear he'd been neglecting his husbandly duties, the fact that Vegeta had pointed it out made him feel worse. Right, when we finish making sure this Naruto is good I'll go home and make up for lost time. Vegeta grinned slyly, you're welcome, Kakuro. Rubbing the back of his head the naive hero chuckled weakly, so what are you going to use your second wish for? I don't know, Vegeta hadn't really thought about it he had hoped that wouldn't have needed the Dragon Balls. Maybe you know wish for Bulma, Vital, and Chi Chi to become Saiyans or something, the naive hero stated casually scratching his chin in thought. The Saiyan prince came to an abrupt halt floating in the air eyes the size of saucers before he groaned slumping his shoulders. Now I feel like a real baka, the amount of times we wished using the Dragon Balls and that has never occurred to me. Only for this naive man child to figure it out is infuriating. Not dignifying an answer, Vegeta launched forward Goku quietly, following with a completely clueless expression on his face. Naruto, unsure what was happening and torn between jumping down to help Hinata or look after Sakura, in the end he created a shadow clone to jump down and check on the Hyuga heiress as the proctor called the match in Neji's favor mostly to get Hinata medical attention. Naruto kneeled down next Sakura. Sakura chan, can you hear me? N Naruto, I feel like my body is on fire what's going on? The rosette haired girl gasped. Her eyes rolled back as she promptly passed out from the pain. No sooner had she passed out the transformation began. Naruto could see the major and minor muscles in Sakura's arms coil and tighten then relax, her milky pink hair slowly began to dark into a more of a bright red and then it began to spike making her look a bit more wild looking. Below clone Naruto watched as the same thing started happening to Hinata. Her short bluish black hair, turned an almost pitch black, got longer slightly shoulder length and start spiking in all directions. For both the clone and the original thought the girls looked wire like this. The clone scooped Hinata into his arms bridal fashion the same could be said for the original as he picked up Sakura. Both girls snuggled closer to their perspective Naruto as the medic Nin escorted the orange haired Saiyan and his clone to the infirmary. The lead medic Nin worked over the two girls feverishly while Naruto stayed in the room but out of the way. The injuries Hinata sustained in the fight with Neji before the incident occurred had been aggravated and made worse so she had been the main priority, Sakura was simply rendered unconscious by whatever had occurred. I don't understand this, Lady Hinata's genetic structure has been rewritten nothing about her is the same genetically aside from the Byakugan to her father or sister, how can this be possible? What do you mean? Naruto asked. If I had to guess she's not human anymore, the medic Nin explained then taking a blood sample from Sakura and examined it. The woman frowned sitting back crossing her arms, genetic markers have the same six additional tags but a different genetic code, they're from the same species just different people. Um, Naruto looked lost and confused as well as worried. A strange high-pitched whine appeared behind them, they are Saiyans like Yugaki, a deep voice stated causing the medic Nin and Naruto to turn. Dressed in a blue tank top and a blue baggy pants with wild hair sprouting from a radically receding hairline, next to him was a man dressed in orange and blue and had hair that looked like a palm tree. V Vegeta Ojasan. Naruto blinked. How did you get here, weren't you in your home dimension? Yes, the Saiyan prince tossed a capsule the size of the pinky finger to Naruto who caught it. What happened to your woman? We're going through the Chunin exams she got pretty beat up before something weird happened. She and Sakura-chan started screaming and Sakura-chan said she felt like her body was on fire, now you said she's a Saiyan. What did you do? Naruto explained in detail the medic Nin looking both confused at who these two strange men were and how Naruto knew them. As I said, they are now Saiyans, I used the Dragon Balls first to give them the location to this dimension so I can give you that capsule inside is something we'll discuss more in detail later. The second wish I should have worded a bit more carefully, Vegeta frowned. Goku chuckled, he wished that every Saiyan who had mates, that the mates get turned into Saiyans, his chuckle turned into a frown, are they alright, he gestured to the two unconscious girls. One is suffering from fatigue done from this wish as for the other, the stress from the transformation combined with the damage from her fight is not doing her body any favors, the medic Nin explained. Kakuro did you bring any Senzu beans? Vegeta asked. The naive hero dug into the front of his shirt produced a small brown sack, never train without them, 
pulling on the drawstrings and pulled out a small green kidney-shaped bean. Um, can she chew or swallow? What good will that bean do? The medic Nin asked skeptically. It has healing properties, woman. She chews and swallows it her injuries no matter how severe will be healed. Vegeta smirked slightly. Both girls will get a sizable Zenkai boost from this. I count you as lucky Gaki, he stated shifting his gaze to the orange-haired boy. Naruto watched as Goku gently put the small bean into Hinata's mouth then used his hands to grind the bean between Hinata's teeth before holding the girl's nose forcing her to swallow a second later Hinata straight up her injuries vanished and her eyes wide looking around. W where am I? Naruto sat down next to her, you're in the infirmary you collapse during your fight with Neji, he watched the girl's face fall. Hey, he gently touched her chin bringing her face and eyes to meet his. Don't be ashamed you fought well and you didn't really lose by knockout you were incapacitated by an unforeseen circumstance, Naruto winced. Wow I think I hurt myself. They all heard a faint chuckle, using three big words in a single sentence must have hurt, Naruto-kun. Naruto turned to see Sakura trying to sit up but feeling so weak, Goku handed her a bean. Raising an eyebrow looking at the orange clad elder Saiyan, what's this? Eat it, it'll fix you up, Naruto explained. With a shrug Sakura did just that biting into the bean chewing it making a face before swallowing the moment it went down her throat its power activated and all the fatigue vanished. Wow what is that? The rosette haired girl asked. It's called a senzu bean, it's grown at the top of Korin's tower in our dimension, Vegeta replied crossing his arms. Now that they are feeling better I like to discuss to the Gaki and his mates why I came here. If you want woman you can have the Gaki's parents present since I know he is probably your village's leader again. The medic Nin felt offended but said nothing leaving, a few minutes later Minato, Kashina, and Makoto appeared. Vegeta raised an eyebrow taking a light sniff, if I didn't know better Minato I'd say you were half Saiyan two mates, like your son I am impressed. Minato blushed rubbing the back of his head, blame Kashina it was her decision. Indeed, the Saiyan prince smirked looking at the red-headed woman with a newfound respect. The woman in question smiled slyly at her husband putting both her hands behind her head trying and failing to look innocent, Gaki you have my knowledge so you know how to work a HOI poi capsule I take it. Naruto nods pulling out the capsule in question and pushed the top, tossing it in the air a huge explosion of smoke clear sitting in pristine condition on the ground was a strange device with a 9 inch screen and a flat microphone. What is that? Naruto asked. Bulma said it's an interdimensional communicator. This way you and I can communicate across dimensions and now that Kakaro knows where you home dimension is we can come here using his instant transmission technique, the Saiyan prince explained. Naruto picked it up looking it over before sitting it on the desk. Wow this is really cool, he then paused turning and running up to Goku. Can I learn that instant transmission jutsu oh, oh, and can you train me I'll bet it'll be really awesome. The naive heroic Saiyan chuckled, well I like your enthusiasm that's for sure but don't you need permission from your parents first or something? Oh right, Naruto zipped over to his parents and his godmother performing the sad eyes jutsu, can I please? Kashina jumped back in shock, ah, who taught you that jutsu? Um, I think I saw Ino-chan use it once on her dad, I thought was really cool how he buckled under it so I asked Ino-chan to teach me, Naruto scratched his cheek in thought. Come to think of it, that was probably the only time Ino-chan was ever nice to me. Sakura looked down sadly the same could be said for Hinata as both missed a lot of opportunities or in Sakura's case squandered opportunities to get to know the boy both coming to love more and more with each passing day. Well I suppose but only if we can teach you too, I'm pretty sure most of what we gave you is pretty jumbled in that head of yours, Minato stated. The problem is who's going to train you for the entire month leading up to the finals, oh the prelims are done by the way, and your numbered was picked, you'll be in the first match against Neji. The fourth Hokage stated watching his son nod. HMPH, why don't we all train him and his women, Vegeta stated. We each take turns. Goku smiled, that's right the hyperbolic time chamber. That's awesome Vegeta with the amount of time we can get, I'm sure all three will master what we can teach them. Makoto raised a hand, what is this time chamber? It's a room where a person can get a year's worth of training in a single day, Vegeta crossed his arms pursing his lips in thought. Gaki any thoughts on how to train your women? We have names you know, Sakura growled, and we're not his, we are our own persons. This made the Saiyan smirk, 
I see why you like the red-haired one, Gaki. She reminds me of Boma. Goku chuckled sadly, wish Goten and Trunks would find girlfriends like her. The Saiyan prince rubbed his chin in thought, hmm, while this dimension doesn't have much in the way of a challenge you or I, Kakaro this place does have something our dimension lacks. Um, what's that? His naive rival asked. Stronger women, the Gaki's mother and godmother are strong, power level must be at least 1000 for the both of them, Vegeta stated. Kashina pouted, I'm only at a thousand, poopy. Vegeta began to go over what he saw while trapped inside Naruto. I see, you simply do not grasp the full potential of your ki, you dilute it instead of harnessing it. Goku looked confused, what does this have to do with Trunks and Goten? Simple you baka, this world have females that would be perfect for them, the wishy-washy females of our dimension do not attract our sons. Like all Saiyans we want our women to be strong either physically, mentally, or emotionally. Bulma while didn't have physical strength made up for it with her mind, your chi chi. Kakaro was raised by her father to be a warrior so you grew attracted to her through her warrior spirit, and while her father was a fraud, Vital holds a lot traits in common with your chi chi making her ideal for your eldest. Goku nodded getting the gist of what his rival was saying, okay I get it, so you want Goten and Trunks to come here to look for girlfriends. Exactly, Vegeta stated letting lose his first genuine smile ever that wasn't a smirk or a sneer. I have watched that Gaki of mine for three years go through his flavor of the week bullshit, and it sickens me. With a sigh the orange clad elder Saiyan nodded, yeah Goten has the same problem, Chi Chi isn't happy about it either. Minato spoke up, we're getting off track here, we were talking about training for Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata. Oh uh, yeah. If you can free a few days sometime in the next month I can take you to Kame's lookout in my dimension and you can each train your son, I can even find people willing to train the girls. I think 18 and Gohan could probably train the bright red haired girl, Gohan knows lots pressure points and healing things while 18 could probably teach her some of her techniques. As for girl in the white coat I bet Piccolo can train her, she has the same feel Gohan had when he was 4 before you and Nappa arrived. Will your pint-sized friend help his woman with the feisty one? Vegeta asked smirking at the tick mark appearing above Sakura's right eyebrow. My name is Sakura. The red-haired Saiyan growled her aura exploding in bluish-white flames. Naruto gently rubbed her shoulders after she calmed down pulling both her and Hinata into an embrace, the poor Hyuga blushing deep red at the contact. Um I'm sure Krillin will help a bit I doubt Gohan or 18 will really need any, Goku replied. So you me, and Naruto's parents train him, while Piccolo trains White Coat Girl, 18 and Gohan train Sakura. H. Hanada, the Hyuga spoke up. Hanada then, Goku smiled. Minato nods, I'll let Sarutobi know I'll need him to sit in for me for a few days, but will this instant transmission jutsu work? Goku put two fingers to his forehead and a second later vanished, another second later he reappeared holding an irate blue-haired woman. Goku Yubaka, what do you think you're doing? He, sorry Bulma just checking to see if my instant transmission worked across dimensions, the orange-clad elder Saiyan explained. The blue-haired woman grumbled crossing her arms over her chest, well I see what Vegeta Ojasan means, she does kind of remind me of Sakura-chan, Naruto chirped up. Shut up, Gaki, Vegeta snorts walking up to his wife. What were you doing when Kakarot showed up that got you upset? GGRRR trying to get my hair to stay down bulma snapped reaching up to push her darker blue almost purple colored her down that wish you made about turning me chi chi and vital into saiyans has given me a case of permanent bad hair day do you know how hard it is for me to keep my hair looking as good as it does not to mention i had go through having my dna rewritten let me tell you the blue haired woman flung her hands in the air it was not pleasant and that's not even the best part i'm late to what Goku asked. My period Yubaka. Bulma shouted then slapped her hands over mouth blushing a deep crimson. Ooh. Goku scratched his head vaguely remembering when Chi Chi told him she had been late. Um, congratulations Bulma. The blue haired sighed turning to her husband scratching her cheek. I was hoping to tell you a bit more privately. Vegeta stood there stunned for a moment before reaching out and pulling his wife into a hug. I am pleased, Bulma. Wow, that's awesome. Naruto stated. The Z fighters and spouses, minus Goku were gathered around the foray of Kami's lookout waiting for Goku to bring Naruto, 
his parents, his godparents, and his future wives from their dimension to the Z Fighter's dimension. Gohan however frowned a bit, thinking back to two years ago which in Naruto's universe was five days ago. Strange it's like the time between our dimension and Naruto's is shifting almost like two wavelengths trying to sink, we go from a 15 year gap in their world to a two year gap in our world. Now everything seems to almost blend together seamlessly how can that be? The eldest of Goku's sons turns and addresses his friends and family detailing this very thing. You're right Gohan this shouldn't be possible, unless time and space are being manipulated in some way, Dend replied looking confused, but how? That would be us, and let me tell you it wasn't pretty, a cheerful female chirped up causing everyone to turn. Standing there were two strange looking female beings, one was roughly came up everyone's chest with purple skin and orange colored hair. The second woman was of regular height with light blue skin and white flowing hair going almost to the ground, both had black eyes, pointed ears, and wore the robes of the Kais. Hello. The shortest cheered holding up two victory signs. You're such a child, time. The taller of the two stated. The smaller one pouted, I happen to like being carefree, space you should do the same. Why you're supreme Kais? Dent. Yep, the shortest smiled. I'm the Supreme Kai of Time and this is my sister the Supreme Kai of Space, and as I said doing what we did to sync space and time so your dimension and that of Naruto's dimension can match up wasn't easy. A lot had to change most of the events in Naruto's universe either never happen or will be changed drastically all thanks to Vegeta's unselfish acts. Is it going to be good or bad? Krillin asked. Mostly good and a few things bad, the Supreme Kai of Space stated. Most of the events that should have happened in Naruto's universe will never happen, the most recent events surrounding Naruto's Chunin exams will even be changed slightly, the events after that though will be changed drastically, to a point where Naruto will be facing enemies in that world he would have waited 4 years and sacrificing a lot of lives to take care of. Now it'll be a freaking cakewalk. The Kai gave Vegeta an irritated glance. Also thanks a lot for that general wish about the Saiyan's spouses being turned into Saiyans you do realize the wish is still active. What do you mean? Bulma asked she was still irritated at her husband for using the dragon to change her DNA but in the long run she felt that it was a benefit, when she had actually asked to start training with her husband something she thought had been a time waster before. While she felt sore afterward she never felt so energetic now, like she could do more and keep focused, plus the prospects of being able to fly without a vehicle in the future was nice not to mention according to her husband she'll be able to keep her good looks well into her 80s. It was a general wish he didn't specifically point out individuals he said Saiyans as a whole. This means if Trunks, Godin, the baby growing inside you, little Pan, and any children Naruto's wives produce have spouses they will be turned into Saiyans, and the cycle will continue. With that one wish Vegeta has assured the revival of the Saiyans in two different dimensions, which is why my sister and I had pull some strings with the ultimate Supreme Kai and the Supreme Kai of the multiverse to sink your dimension with Naruto's, the blue skinned woman rubbed her forehead. What a headache. Vegeta looked dumbfounded at first before shaking his head giving a smirk and crossing his arms over his chest. Interesting but what of our universe's timeline? It slipped into another alternate events version like many others. You may recall future Trunks timeline is still ongoing many of the events that have occurred in your timeline hasn't occurred in his, so much so he's actually working for me, the Supreme Kai of Time explained. There are several others, she taps her lips with a fingernail thinking, one major change is Majin Buu's reincarnation has been stopped until the next generation, something about the ultimate Supreme Kai wanting Pan to grow up around her grandfather plus it'll give her more of a chance to become friends with, the short Kai froze blushing. Oopsie almost gave away the surprise, this caused a collective face foe from the Z fighters sending them all crashing to the ground. The Supreme Kai of Space sighed looking at her sister, well we gave you the reasons why your dimension and Naruto's dimension are now synced, I would also suggest you take up Naruto's offer to attend the Chunin exams it'll be beneficial to both sides. With that the two Supreme Kais vanished just as Goku, brought Naruto, his family, and extended family. What? Goku asked looking confused, it's nothing Goku, Piccolo stated, so which one is the one I'll be training? Hanada weakly raised her hand while trying for the 30 times since the last two days to get her hair to lay flat so far no such luck. I am A or you am Mr Piccolo? The Namek sighed walking up to the girl, great another Gohan, he smirked. At least I know how to start then. 
Gohan shook his head, I almost feel sorry for that girl. Why almost? Vital asked shifting Pan to her other shoulder. Well Piccolo was never what I call gentle but when she comes out of the time chamber I guarantee you anything she has been shy about she won't be shy about anymore, Gohan explained. Sakura waited until Hinata and Piccolo went around the corner and into the building, so what she'll come out, Naruto-kun, start wearing less conservative clothing, punch someone when they piss her off if that's possible, and actually talk without stuttering. Bah, there's enough UAL tension in that girl, she won't simply the gaki, she'll jump him, Vegeta snorted. No he's mine first. Sakura snapped and blushed causing Naruto to smirk and Jiraiya to giggle while writing in his little research book. GGGRRRR. The rosette haired girl stomped over to the giggling pervert, snatching his book away. She then handed it to Makoto, who promptly set it on fire with one of her fire jutsu. Thank you. Piccolo watched as Hanada explored the outside of the living area within the time chamber, which was about as empty as a Saiyan's stomach after a major fight. The room was predominantly white, endless white to be exact, stretching as far as even Hanada's Baikugan could see. W, what a lonely place came Hinata's reply. Which is why we'll only spend a day in the real world here, Goku did explain the properties of this room, Piccolo asked. Why yes, H how do we start? Hinata asked. Piccolo pulled out a HOI poi capsule and tossed it out into the middle of the empty space a huge puff of smoke later a large spherical object appeared with a door. Inside is a gravity chamber, for the first six months you are going to periodically go from 10 times to 500 times normal gravity he held up a hand stalling Hanada's protests. You aren't human anymore your body will slowly adapt to the increase in gravity to a point that walking around 500 times gravity will feel like you're walking in one times normal. Piccolo quietly pulled out a scroll. In that time you'll memorize these basic martial arts forms for Aikido and Tai Chi. Looking at the scroll Hanada tilted her head questioning, I don't you understand. Your martial arts is too rigid for you. For your natural grace you need styles that allow you to move and flow like water, I will give you the form of Jeet Kune Do after you've managed to get the basics of these stances, Piccolo crossed his arms noting the girl's hesitance. Your gentle fist technique is based upon a more ridged form of Jeet Kune Do focusing on well-placed strikes to the weak points in your world's chakra network. Tai Chi is about flexibility and flow, while Aikido is about misdirection and letting your opponent provide the power to your moves. The true essence of your family's style is about flow and misdirection. That's why I stated you need to flow like water, Piccolo paused. In short you need to be like water, if you put water into a cup it becomes the cup, you put it in your canteen it becomes the canteen, water flows but it also crashes, it shapes as well as erodes, do understand now. Hanada's eyes sparked at such wonderful philosophy, I understand Piccolo sensei. XXX outside the time chamber six hours in eighteen pursed her lips looking down at the gasping girl who she had to agree to train, the girl in her honest opinion sucked. Didn't train, while I like primping keeps Krillin interested I don't make it my sole thing in life. The blonde haired bio android sighed heavily glancing at her co-trainer. Well what you think, reminds me a lot of vital, rough around the edges but I see a lot of potential. I'm thinking something along the lines of praying mantis style of Hung Gar mix it with wushu and a lot endurance training, Gohan stated adjusting his glasses. Add in a little turtle hermit training, shame the time chamber doesn't have a field to till or something to construct, Krillin adding his two cents and putting his hands behind his head looking down at the girl. Sakura looked at her three trainer with a mixture of horror and confusion, mostly because didn't know the taijutsu styles they listed and the very idea of doing physical labor reminded her a little too much of D-ranked missions. Well she's not a part of the finals. A voice spoke up as Minato walked up, I could arrange for you to take on some farming and construction D-ranked missions after she's done in the time chamber. 18 smirked, that'll work, don't suppose you have a lake with a giant shark? She snickered looking at Sakura's increasingly horrified expression. When she and Krillin first got together the short man explained in detail his initial training with Goku, and the amount of labor-intensive chores they did along with extremely heavy shells strapped to their back. The amount of hell her husband had done when he was a kid made her respect him a bit more. She found him fairly charming and a bit naive but not as much as Goku, she often wondered if her alternate timeline self had killed him herself or did Seventeen kill him. Something to ask future trunks if I ever meet him again. 
She didn't like the thought that could actually harm her husband and she prayed daily that there wasn't some kind of hidden program in her brain lying dormant to do just that. Minato shook his head looking a bit worried at such a comment, no shark why? Krillin snickered, something Goku and I had to deal with during training with Master Roshi, but if you have a swimming pool or a reasonably large lake that'll work just as well. The blonde-haired Hokage shrugged, there's a large lake about a mile south of Konoha most people use it as a picnic spot. Perfect, after we get into the time chamber and whip Sakura here into shape martial arts wise we'll take her to do those D-rank missions, Gohan smiled watching Sakura seem to groan long and low at her impending doom. Naruto was both more fortunate and less so, his taskmasters were the two full-blooded Saiyans and his mother as well as his godmother. Little did he know the passing knowledge he acquired would spark a thirst for everything that was seals. After Hinata and Sakura would get their turns at the time chamber Naruto would then get his turns, four days with each trainer. Vegeta was going to make it his mission to get Naruto to transform into a Super Saiyan. Goku would teach him the instant transmission, his Kamehameha and the spirit bomb. Kashina told him she would teach him how to understand the information he got from the knowledge on seals, his family's taijutsu and simply to spend time with his mother. Makoto would help refine his already expert elusive skills help him in his tracking abilities, and stealth. Goku was currently doing an overview of the instant transmission as it was the easiest to do while waiting for Hinata to emerge and Sakura to go in. Basically you have to have been at the area you want to teleport to, and you have to paint a clear picture of it in your mind, the orange-clad Saiyan explained. Naruto had long abandoned his orange jumpsuit to wear a black outfit similar to Goku's while wearing orange underneath, think Vegito's outfit, a long black cloak similar to his father's with orange flames. We'll go into more details later. Mostly the scary sides. Hanada was crouched gasping for air, the intensity of her training combined with her sensei's unrelenting pressure had been a godsend and the fact her sensei wasn't belittling her abilities or coddling her had made her grow. Her muscle tone from the intense gravity from the spherical room made her sleek and agile. Her clothing was in shambles but the color scheme looked nice purple with a slight gray tone mixed in. Piccolo had given her an outfit similar to his after her shinobi gear had been thrashed by her intense gravity training. Her hair was now down to her mid-back which with her now Saiyan blood made it look like a prickly cactus, her fierce looking lavender eye glowing in anticipation of leaving the time chamber looking for Naruto and showing how much she had grown. She wanted him more now than she did entering the chamber, the training had brought about a carnal in her. I know Sakura will want him first, so I'll take them into that bedroom I spotted on the way in here. Rip Sakura Chan's clothing off of her, push Naruto kun to the bed while giving him a preview of what's to come by making Sakura Chan squirm on my fingers. Hinata licked her lips, standing up, glancing at the huge hourglasses, just imagining getting Sakura to squirm was enough to get her wet. Are we done? Piccolo smirked, watching her. The closer to the time they were to be let out, the more distracted the girls seemed to get. She still managed to absorb everything he taught her though to the point they were now sparring daily mostly to keep her focused while at the same time distracted, he was now pretty certain that once they left that all thoughts of training Sakura and Naruto would be put off a night at the very least, same will probably be said after Sakura is brought into the chamber for her run. Yes, let's go. Everyone heard the bell signaling the time chamber had been opened Sakura moved to stand next to Naruto waiting to see how Hinata did and looked. No one had to wait long as Hinata walked up at pretty good pace, her purple outfit frazzled and ripped in various places, her hair long, but it was her eyes that showed how much she truly changed, gone was the timid flower that entered the chamber, while she still felt like Hinata there was confidence in her stride. She walked up to Naruto grabbed him by the collar of his cloak and pulled him into a hungry that spoke of longing and, before Sakura could protest Hinata let Naruto go then grabbed the rosette haired girl and proceeded to do the same to her. After separating from the day's red-haired girl she grabbed both their hands and started pulling them away. Naruto-kun, Sakura-chan, and I have something to do with you tomorrow afternoon, she stated. Why afternoon? Goku asked scratching his head, because I doubt we'll get much sleep tonight, Hinata replied with a surprising dirty smirk on her face. Remember silencing jutsus, I don't need to hear my Sochi's girlfriends screaming his name in full moans. Kashina chirped up earning her a raised eyebrow from 18 and Makoto. Minato sighed shaking his head, while Vegeta let loose his own smirk. While they are occupied I guess we have an evening to ourselves. Kashina licked her lips, 
Say Dan is the room my Sochi and his girlfriends go into the only bedroom? Dan shook his head, the lookout has had to house multiple people before, there are several rooms in the back you can take. Oh good I don't want my future daughter-in-laws showing me up, Kashina grabbed her husband and Makoto by the arms and dragged them into the back. Kashina, is this really necessary? Minato asked. Yep. Databane. The red-haired woman chirped hearing a long sigh from Makoto along with a faint giggle. See Makoto wants it, so Minato-kun you better get ready for a long night. After the six shinobi left 18 pursed her lips, I kind of like, red. Minato stood quietly watching his son go over the seal portion of the Hiraishin, internally he was always amazed at how Kashina was a natural at seals, now fast forward to his son and how well the young man grasped the concepts the fourth Hokage couldn't be more proud of his child. Sitting quietly watched his son work on ways to mark opponents and everyday items with the Hiraishin seal so it was possible to travel great distances quickly or quicker than a Saiyan could fly. Minato smirked slightly as other thoughts drifted into his mind like the day after Hinata emerged from her time in the chamber, she had been correct when she dragged Naruto and Sakura into one of the bedrooms, the trio hadn't emerged for two whole days instead of just one. When they finally did emerge Sakura was taken by 18, Krillin, and Gohan into the time chamber. With 18 making this single comment, guess we don't really need to work on your stamina. Why do you say that, 18? Gohan asked. If you can for two days straight and actually come out looking refreshed, then you don't need stamina and endurance training, 18 stated with a lewd smile. Speaking of which, Krillin, I think we need our own stamina and endurance training after these exams are done. Gohan chuckled giving a brief shrug, Krillin gave a goofy grin nodding rapidly before the trio entered with Sakura. Kashina gave her son a dry knowing smile, you know she'll be just as horny coming out as Hinata was. It's the way of the Saiyan. Vegeta explained smirking. Tell me Kakaro has your woman taken up sparring with you and your youngest Gaki yet? Goku smiled nodding. Oh yeah, it's been fun reminds me constantly of our match at the World Martial Arts Tournament. I can imagine, Vital stated shifting her weight trying to weigh down her hair for the umpteenth time since Vegeta's wish had been made. She hadn't had her hair this wild looking since before the fight with Majin Buu. While it was annoying she felt it brought her closer to her husband and her daughter, who was currently fussing holding her arms out to her grandpa. Okay Pan, she sighed shaking her head walking up to her father-in-law. Goku smiled gently holding the infant out making weird faces to his granddaughter getting her to giggle. Vital sighed sadly she felt a hand on her shoulder looking up at the red-haired Uzumaki. All little girls are like that, they look up to their grandpas. Growing up before I was sent to Konoha I spent a lot of time with mine. I know and she doesn't do it all the time maybe I'm just a bit jealous my dad was an orphan and my mom's parents both died when she just got out of her twenties, so I never met my grandparents, Vital explained. Kashina smiled brightly patting the younger woman on the shoulder, before frowning. If this is uncomfortable please let me know, but what happened to your mom? Vital looked up at the sky her face giving a pained expression. She was killed when Vegeta and Nappa first landed on Earth, though I didn't know it at the time. Vegeta's eyes tighten as he listened in, hearing the aftermath of one of his many earlier sins wasn't comfortable even though he didn't perform the key blast that wiped out that city he did condone it. What was your mother doing? Kashina asked. She was dad's wrestling promoter and manager along with most of his students, Vital smiled sadly. Dad told me she loved the work, going to various cities to promote him. This was before he got into martial arts. She was in that town promoting an upcoming wrestling event, when the Saiyans landed. The dark haired woman leaned forward tears coming out of her eyes. Dad was watching the news and caught the big one just seemed to point his fingers skyward before the screen went blank. Nappa called that attack giant storm, Vegeta stated watching the sky. Everything within a 10 mile radius was incinerated. Vital grimaced she long since forgiven Vegeta but it was often hard. Her only saving grace was the knowledge that her mother's murderer had been also killed by the prince after Goku crippled the larger Saiyan. I remember my father had been glued to the television for hours watching the news reports and the live footage, I didn't recognize any of the fighters at the time until Gohan explained everything, the dark haired woman hugged herself. It was after that dad went into martial arts he promised he never let anyone go through what he went through again. Wow, that's what I call motivation, Kashina smiled. The dark haired woman snorted, don't be he covers that aspect by being a blowhard, a goofball, and getting into stuff that's way over his head. 
I'm glad Cell didn't take him seriously, the woman teared up. If he had I'd have lost my dad that day. The red-haired Uzumaki gently pulled the woman into a hug. Well things worked out and you got an even bigger family now, Databane. Vital smiled wiping her tears as Goku handed Pan back to her no doubt the infant sensing her mother's stress and wanting to be held. True to form Sakura emerged grabbing both her future husband and her sister wife by the hands dragging both into the bedroom for another round of ball busting, mind blowing. A teen smirked crossing her arms over her chest, girl has a lot of potential needs someone who's better at medicine than Gohan though. Oh, oh, I know who we can get to teach her, Kashina jumped up and down excitedly. Minato-kun, let me take Pervy Sage and Sochi to look for the old hag after the exams. The blonde-haired Hokage sighed rubbing his temples, you know she hates it when you call her that. The redhead giggles eyes sparkling with mischief, so, my cousin needs to brace up and listen to the music, she can't spend her life moping and sucking down sake like it's going out of style. Letting out a long-suffering sigh nodding, fine. Once the exams are done I'll draw up an A-rank mission scroll to bring back Tsunade to Konoha. Sitting at the dinner table after explaining in detail what her training had been, Sakura waited on bated breath as her parents absorbed the information she was both encouraged and disheartened at their reaction. Kazashi walked over to a cabinet pulling out a bottle of sake not even bothering to pour some into a cup drank a bit straight from the bottle. Mebuki just sighed leaning forward resting her head in her hands. I see. The woman said softly, what are these people like? I only met Vegeta, his wife Bulma, Goku, his son Gohan, his daughter-in-law Vital, his granddaughter Pan who's really cute, Sakura giggled. His best friend Krillin, Krillin's wife 18, Dend, and a guy named Piccolo. So I can't really judge everyone, but who I've met were really nice people. But that's nothing compared to how I feel when I'm with Naruto, the rosette-haired girl said softly. Considering how he came off at first I'm surprised you didn't punch him, Kazashi stated. Sakura sighed thinking about Naruto's almost overly aggressive act when he woke up in the forest of death. I wanted to when he first ed me, but the longer the went on the more right it felt. Looking extremely confused turning to her parents, is that wrong I mean I went it started I was appalled then I ended up practically wanting to suck his face off, is that normal? Kazashi sighed plopping down in a chair messaging his temples, this could only happen to a Haruno. If it went that quickly over just to it may have something to do with your Haruno genes. Mebuki raised a delicate eyebrow, I thought the soul bond stuff was a myth in your family. The pink haired man sighed rubbing his temples, no not a myth but really rare, like once in every hundred will ever find their soul bond mate. Looks like Sakura found hers at the tender age of six. Sakura blinked thinking back to that time before Ino and her Sasuke fangirl indoctrination. She frozen as a memory sparked, why did I keep going to the park when I knew I would get harassed by bullies? Her answer came in the form an image of an orange haired boy wearing a white shirt, black shorts chasing away her bullies and then after introduction she gave the boy a hug. She sat there looking stunned, I completely forgot I met Naruto when I was six. It's understandable sweetheart. You had a lot traumatic experiences with those bullies, Mebuki responded gently patting her shoulder. Sakura's father smiled softly, things have gotten better haven't they? The rosette haired girl thought about it and nodded, her life had definitely gotten better, oh yeah, Naruto-kun and Hinata-chan rocked our world from dusk till dawn twice, Sha. Inner Sakura made her presence known which in turn caused the outer persona to support a healthy blush and a minor nosebleed remembering the positions she and Hinata had taken each one more lewd than the last. It's still kind of surreal to be in a three-way relationship, alongside the Hyuga heiress and Naruto, especially since I wanted to be with Sasuke barely a month ago. Kazashi frowned deeply remembering what his daughter told him about Sasuke's behavior. While he didn't particularly like Naruto's own behavior regarding his daughter, at least the boy redeemed himself. The Uchiha on the other hand the only redeeming factor was Naruto's intervention. I'd killed the little shit personally and I'm surprised at Naruto's restraint. Sakura sighed, it wasn't pity more or less it was the fact there were no witnesses otherwise I'm pretty sure Naruto would have killed Sasuke. Would have been good riddance then, the pink haired man grumped. Um, did you and Hinata use any contraception, Sakura-chan? Mebuki asked a bit now that she was able to fully process her baby girl was no longer a baby. The rosette haired froze in their first romp both she and Hinata did use the contraception jutsu, 
but 18's constant jabs and lewd jokes had gotten her so hot and bothered the moment she emerged from the time chamber it took all her willpower not to simply take her future husband and her sister wife right there on the main floor in plain view of Naruto's parents, godmother, and newest friends. Needless to say she hadn't been thinking clearly when she got her boyfriend and girlfriend into the bedroom. The first time yes, the second time no. Your period? Mebuki went to the calendar waiting. Sakura and her mother had worked out the days it would start and end since her first a year ago. It won't start for another week, the rosette stated in a heightened tone, gasping for air. This good or bad? Kazashi asked confused. The blonde-haired Haruno raised a simple eyebrow at her husband, if her period goes late I'd say we'll have an interesting nine months to think about it, dear. We won't find out till after the finals in the exams. Sakura morosely stated mentally praying to whatever Kami that would listen that she didn't end up pregnant because of filled stupidity, but according to Vegeta most first matings turn out to be the factor in providing heirs. Granted it had been her second mating session but it had been the first unprotected. I just hope Vegeta-san is wrong, while I like the prospect of giving Naruto-kun some kids I would really like to wait 3 or 4 years. Hiyashi Hayuga sat in the Siza position surrounding him on both sides was the elder council. The reason for the gathering his eldest daughter asked to spar with her younger sister, and the elders decided to use this as an opportunity to judge if Hanada should be placed in the branch house and make way for Hanabi to become clan heiress. The old fools have no idea what Hanada has been doing the past month, I wouldn't have believed it if Minato and Naruto hadn't taken me there to show me. I feel sorry for Hanabi and would almost feel sorry for the elders, if wasn't for what they plan to do to Hanabi if she loses. Hanabi stood across from her sister feeling worried both for herself and for her sister, because either way regardless of the outcome someone was getting branded. Why did you make this challenge, sister? I didn't make the challenge to fight you, sister, Hanada said softly glaring at the elders. They put you into this position, if I lose they think they'll be able to brand me thinking I'm weak and not worthy of being heir. If you lose they'll try to brand you calling you weak for losing to me. The Hyuga heiress snorts in disgust, they should pick their fights better, once that was said Minato, Naruto, and Vegeta appeared the last sneering at the elders, the same type of sneer he used on Goku just before he blasted an entire section of cheering fans after he was given the Majin mark by Babidi. Needless to say it wasn't a pleasant sight, Hanabi. Hanada smiled faintly walking forward and hugging her younger sister. After the exam finals I'll be moving into the Namikaze estate as the fourth Hokage will announce Naruto-kun has chosen the wives to help rebuild his clan, I'm one of them. Hanabi's eyes widened in surprise before letting loose a huge smile, why you mean he accepts you, the one you've been dreaming of. Hanada's smile grew and nods, yes, I have to share him but I don't mind. The chief elder stood, never we will not allow such a thing. Like you are in a position to make threats or demands, I'd say we should do what I wanted to do, and kill them, less of a headache, Vegeta snorts watching the elders pale. Hiyashi bowed to the Saiyan prince, I apologize to you prince Vegeta, the elders are steeped too much in tradition. Traditions must be followed, and I refuse to allow the heiress to marry outside the clan, the eldest of the elders aka Hiyashi's father, Hanada's grandfather stated. Tradition leads down roads both good and bad, in your case as well as my own tradition ends badly. Vegeta stated bringing his hand up palm spread, this got Minato, Naruto, and Hiyashi worried. Hanada simply turned putting Hanabi behind her. The Saiyan tradition your granddaughter is now a part of was a very bloody tradition, we destroyed entire civilizations just so we could sell their planets. Know this if you so much as approach one of my subjects or anyone she considers her family with this bird caged seal. I'll personally introduce you to the old Saiyan traditions and render this entire section of the Konoha Baron of all life. With that the Saiyan prince left the room. Hiyashi's father looked shakily at his son, why you would let outsiders into our meetings now Hiyashi? The Hyuga clan head glared at his father, you dictated to me once before of our clan's worth and I lost my brother, you planned on dictating to me again of traditions and planned on marking my eldest child with the seal. Do you have any idea what would happen to our clan if I allowed you to follow through with what you planned? Nothing, the elder stated pompously. That is where you would be wrong, Minato stated making his presence known. Naruto chose Hinata as one of his wives to revive the Uzumaki clan here in Konoha. The Uzumaki clan prides itself on seals, 
so marking her wouldn't be the real problem between Naruto and Kashina they'd probably get rid of the seal before the ink finished drying, but it would construe a breach of trust between clans within the village and start a clan war, one the Hyuga clan would lose, doubly so because Naruto will offer the branch family asylum in the Uzumaki clan walls and would be willing to remove the seal as a sign of union between Naruto and Hinata. I'd activate the seal before any of that happened, I make sure the moment she was marked to be activated, the elder stated coldly. I will not allow my clan to be soiled in such a way. Like I'm going to let you slap it on me or my sister, grandfather, Hanada stated haughtily. I asked for this spar to take place to show you how futile it will be, and once the spar is done, I'm taking me and my sister to the Namikaze estate to get as far from you as possible. HMPH, the elder stood up walking over to Hanabi and pushed her away roughly Naruto grabbed her before she fall causing the younger girl to blush. He smirked hoisting her up and over his head for her to sit on his shoulders as he walked back to give his Hinata chan the room she would need to beat her grandfather into submission. The elder dropped into the traditional gentle fist stance. Hinata however seemed to slide into a rather loose and flowing version of the stance, visually the elder had seen one far too similar to his liking. Scowling slightly, so like your mother, gentle when she should have been hard, warm instead of cold, kind instead of ruthless. She was such a terrible match for my son and then she bore you and I knew you would follow her example, the same weak example. Now you infect Hanabi with your weakness, I'm going to be doing our clan a great favor. Hanada sighed, shut up and fight. The Hyuga elder stood gasping for breath, he always considered himself in great shape, keeping himself from getting soft he trained not as much as in his youth but enough to keep the edge on. But staring down his failure of a granddaughter who looked like she wasn't even winded irked him like nothing. Why you, failure, like, your, mother, the man scowled. Hanada's eyes narrowed slightly, she had compassion and love for everyone both main and branch. She, was, weak, she always, has, been, if, you're, the elder took a deep breath to steady his speech, if your father had chosen the woman I set him up with then you and your sister would never come into being. I would have a strong and ruthless grandson right now to train and succeed him. But no I get you and Hanabi both spitting images of that timid waste of time Hitomi. Hanada sighed almost sadly looking at the man. There was no love or even acknowledgement in his eyes, just scorn, hatred. This caused her to wonder, was he involved in mother's death somehow? Both births had been remarkably difficult and doubled as the pregnancies went on, to the point that when Hanabi came her mother had no strength in her body and her heart gave out. Only subtle well-placed Jukin strikes could mimic flailing health and no one outside of Tsunade herself could have seen the signs. Why you murdered her, the Saiyan Hyuga growled. You used Jukin to strike at vital points that weakened her health gradually. She watched her grandfather sneer before glancing at Naruto who gave her a subtle nod. Her rage built up, while she had suspected this to small degree she would have never imagined her father's sperm donor to hate her mother so much that he would kill her. How dare you! bringing both her arms across her chest with both her index finger and middle fingers extended. You are within range of my field of fire, I'm going to end you. Your pathetic Jukin strikes will do nothing, the old man snorted but secretly he was worried because the stance she was in wasn't even remotely like the 8 trigrams 64 palms jutsu. His worry increased when he saw both of Hinata's fingers began to spark then a bright yellowish purple glow appear. Oh this isn't the 8 trigrams jutsu you're familiar with, this is something I invented with Piccolo Sensei. I combined his strongest key attack with my own version of the 8 trigrams jutsu, one that mother had been working on before her death at apparently your hands so it's only fitting I use it on you. She did a pirouette bringing her hands away from her body, 80 trigrams. Special beam gatling cannon. Before the elder could react Hanada started using a strange corkscrew style beam of energy that first lanced through his upper arm destroying muscle, bone, and tissue. The elder could only register the outrageous amounts of pain as his world spiraled into a vortex of blood and gore as the energy beams tore through his entire body in rapid fashion. When Hanada was done the biggest piece of him was his head which promptly collapsed to the ground and rolled until it stopped in front of the other elders. She ended her pirouette and dropped her hands eyes closed with her body shaking. A few seconds later she felt two warm arms wrap around her from behind and another from the front. One behind she knew by his smell, the other judging by the height was her little sister. Taking a few deep breaths, opening her eyes glaring at the other elders. 
I will not put myself or my little sister into conflict with the branch family nor will I turn a blind eye to the main branch's practices of subjugating the branch family as such I ask the Uzumaki clan to remove the birdcage seal immediately. What of Kumo surely you don't want our clanmates used as breeding stock? The eldest woman asked. After how the main family treated the branch family and if Kumo was willing to give them respect and acknowledgement then yes, Kumo would be a much more beneficial arrangement than what they have now, you old hag. Hanada scowled. Everyone branch members included jumped at Hanada's mode of speech, this was not the same Hanada the Hayuga clan had come to know. One she was speaking with no stutter, two she was forceful and determined, yet many of the branch members still saw the kind-hearted girl that adored them as she grew. This family has been separate for far too long and I will not stand for it a second longer. Not a single sound was heard until a series of slow claps was heard prompting everyone to turn to see Hiyashi clapping with pride in his eyes. I am proud my daughter, to see you finally live up to your mother's legacy brings great joy to my heart. He paused walking up to her, Hanabi, and Naruto pride practically swelling in his chest. Look at our daughter Hitomi, I finally see your confidence and gentleness in her. I feared it would take so much more and a great deal more hardship before she became the beautiful flower that I see before me. Whoever this Piccolo is I must thank him for bringing out my daughter's potential. T. Tucson? Hanada looked at her father questionably. Hiyashi held up a hand turning to address his youngest, Hanabi. This is what your mother was like after Kashina fixed her confidence issues, she was warm and kind but was not afraid to speak her mind and lay down the law, he turned to the elders glaring at them. If I find out that any of you had plotted with my father to kill Hitomi you will be joining him in death. The elders all nodded as Hiyashi smiled faintly at his eldest daughter, I can see you doing well in the future Hinata-chan, I am sorry for treating you harshly as I have in the past. I wanted you to gain confidence and instead I pushed you further into your shell, it took a complete stranger to break you out of that shell. Hinata smiled faintly she was finally being acknowledged by her father and it felt both wonderful and a bit bittersweet. It wasn't just you, Kuranai-sensei coddled me. Piccolo sensei not only helped me with my training he also helped me realize I would not get anywhere sitting back waiting to be seen. I will no longer sit on the sidelines, I will stand side by side with my intended and my sister wife to usher in changes. Hiyashi nods smiling, I look forward to seeing more in the future. I also would like permission to begin living with Naruto kun, Hinata said softly. I want to solidify my place at his right side, while Sakura takes her place on his left. After the Chunin exams, we plan to form a new team. Hiyashi nodded, if that is your wish then by all means, judging by Naruto's own actions during this conflict he supports any decision we make, he gets a nod from the whisker marked Saiyan. It is good to see you again Minato, but where is Kashina? Minato blushed and sighed, Kashina and Makoto are currently dead to the world I believe the term is. Last night both were highly energetic. Translation Dad got laid six ways from Sunday, my godmother and my mother are sleeping blissfully happy, Naruto smiled slyly. The blonde Hokage sighed heavily glancing at his son, I wasn't going to use those terms, son. Meh, semantics, Naruto replied as Hiyashi cleared his throat trying hard not to blush at his longtime friend's expense. Oh what about Neji, and the pole up his ass? You want me to pull it out and beat him with it? Hiyashi thought about it, not the term I would use, but if you can humble him a bit I would be most grateful. His fixation on fate needs to be removed before it gets him killed. Oh, I can do that all right one order of humble pie coming up, Naruto stated gently running his hand down Hinata's back who was fidgeting with each stroke. He smirked noting she was glancing out the corner of her eyes and they promised him a long night of passion. XXX a day before the finals. Trunks sighed heavily wandering through the hidden leaf. Both he and Godin had been, encouraged, to explore the elemental nations. Encourage my ass, dad practically tossed in this world and said, go find a mate worthy of you, Gaki. Trunks sighed again at first he was going to refuse until he thought about it, every girl he's been with lasted maybe a week or less something about their attitude, personality, or lack of fire turned him off. He finally broke down and asked his father what was wrong and the reply came back, you are looking for someone who's strong. It doesn't have to be physical strength either, your mother lacks physical strength at present but she makes it up in two areas, she has a powerful mind and an iron will. So here was the Demi Saiyan wandering the hidden leaf looking for someone to spark interest. Needless to say he found plenty of women in the village that did just that, most of the Kunoichis were strong sand fierce, 
however most were 10 to 20 years older than himself, while not a bad thing in retrospective it wasn't good either. There were only three girls around his age that he met to date, Hanada, Sakura, and Ino. Of the three only Ino was single and she reminded him way too much of Krillin's first girlfriend Marin. Needy, physically obsessed with herself, a gossip, and bossy, none sparked much interest and was way too high maintenance. As he wandered his super sensitive nose picked up the distinct smell, of metal, charcoal, borax, and tempering oil. Scanning the buildings he found a blacksmith shop to his right. Higarashi Ninja Steel, Trunks perked up glancing over his right shoulder at his sword. Well I do need a new whetstone for my sword, and maybe I can order a backup. Walking into the building he saw rows of shinobi gear, shirts, pants, cloth for the headbands, mesh shirts, armor weaved shirts. Then there was rows of boxes with shuriken, kanai, blank storage scrolls, in the back behind the counter were the bigger weapons, swords, pole arms, kodachi, say, nunchukas. Letting out a low whistle, now this is something. See something you like? came a chipper feminine voice to Trunks's left, he turned and came face to face with a girl whose hair was done in buns, wearing a Chinese-style pink no-sleeve shirt, black pants. She wore a shinobi headband and a pleasant smile, she also looked to be around Trunks' age. See a lot of things I like, Trunks chuckled. Got an awesome shop here, Trunks briefs. Tenton Higarashi, my family owns the place, Tenton chirped. You're new here aren't you? Nodding. Yeah my dad practically tossed me and my best friend at his dad and said go explore this new world. Godin took it to heart and flew off, myself I stayed around. That's pretty awesome, the weapon mistress stated, you're from that group Naruto knows right? Yep, Trunks stated. Not against that are you, heard a lot of people bad mouthing Naruto just walking down the street. Absolutely not I was one of the only kids in the orphanage that looked after Naruto, well before I got adopted anyway. Tenton said with a pained smile. I'm glad his parents are alive and he's making some new friends. Cool, both drifted off into awkward silence before Trunks smacked his head, sorry, um, can I get a whetstone and maybe look at some of your sword patterns? Tenton giggled walking behind the counter and pulling out a selection of whetstones and large booklet. Can I have a look at your sword, it'll help determine the whetstone. Trunks unsheathed his sword and casually flipped the sword into the air catching it blade first handing it to her. She looked at it with a great deal of reverence. This is a good quality sword where did you get it? Trunks smiled sadly, a friend. The weapon mistress nodded inspecting it holding it up checking the edge, a grade 6 whetstone, anything more and it'll warp the edge. She moved all but one of the stone back under the counter. That'll be 350 Rio. Trunk handed her the money. How Trunks got the cash was from his mother, she handed him gold she exchanged from the bank from the family account, which once he and Godin arrived in the elemental nations they went to the local bank in the hidden leaf and had the gold turned into Rio, then split it down the middle for travel, food, and leisure expenses. Why look for another sword this one is an excellent piece. That's the reason, I like a new sword made mostly so I can put this up and not use it, give it a nice place of remembrance for my friend, the Demi Saiyan explained. Tenton eyes widened for a second at the realization and blushed a bit, never thought about that, well if you pick out a pattern you like my dad should be home tomorrow and we can get started the day after the finals. Trunks smiled and nodded looking down at the booklet opening it, as he looked the two got into a long conversation involving their adventures, Tenten's missions with her eccentric sensei, her equally eccentric teammate, and her rather broody other teammate. Emos, Trunks snorted causing Tenton to giggle. My dad was like that before he met my mom, still is from time to time. Who do you think will win the tournament tomorrow? The weapon mistress asked. Don't think I know Naruto will win, Trunks smirked. How do you know that? Granted he beat Kiba like he was nothing in the prelims but he graduated last of his class, Tenton stated. Never ever underestimate someone, just because they ain't the brightest tool in the shed. My godfather grew up virtually by himself in a house in the middle of nowhere. His understanding of the outside in general was so bad he couldn't tell the difference between girls and boys for nearly 10 years. It took him meeting my mom and his wife to break him of that. The Demi Saiyan pause. Sorry just my godfather is easily the strongest guy in our universe, and Naruto reminds me a lot of him. The girl nodded smiles, that's not what I mean but I'm glad someone is sticking up for him. Trunks blushed scratching the back of his head, yeah sorry, anyway Naruto got training from my dad. 
my godfather, and his parents during the month, and let me tell you, I can see why his parents were the strongest ninja in this village at one time. Really how did they squeeze in so much training? Tenton asked. Trunks thought about it. Well if you promise not say anything and maybe if you let me take you out to dinner tonight I might spill the beans on how he got so much training in, and to sweeten the deal I'll throw in extra for that new sword, pointing at a picture in the booklet. Blushing slightly at being asked out, um, she paused looking at the time and froze, they had been talking for almost five hours. Looking stunned, she never had held a conversation with any one customer or not anything longer enough to get orders from her sensei, take an order from a customer, or talk to her foster parents. Glancing at the demi Saiyan, she found him to nice, cute, appreciated weaponry, and above all didn't talk down to her like most boys she talked to, only Lee had ever treated her like an equal. Sure, maybe I can weasel some sword techniques out of you too, she smirks. Trunks laughed, I'm up for any training you can think of. Godin and Trunks frowned at his father as they materialized just outside the Namikaze household. Goku was oblivious to these frowns as his eyes were still closed, when he opened them he either didn't notice said frowns or ignored them. Okay, Vegeta and I agreed the two of you need stop, Goku paused focusing, what did Vegeta say, oh yeah, he said you need to stop going through your flings of the week. So we both felt Naruto's world would be ideal for you too to find girlfriends that you'll actually stay with longer than a week or two. So go and find a girlfriend, Goku stated before using his instant transmission and vanishing. Trunks groaned looking at his longtime best friend, I knew this was going to happen, dad's been grumbling about it for almost a year. Goten shrugged, well could be a lot worse but do you know why we were thrown into Naruto's world for this? Well, dad explained to me before dragging me over to your place, that reason we haven't found any girls we like is that, our Saiyan blood wants strong women, even gave examples, my mom's brains, your mom being a fighter which I am not going to lie Goten makes your mom h-h-o-o-t-t-t. Then Ya got vital and the fact she's been training since she was Gohan's age, then 18 don't know why my future self, hates her but she's hot too, Trunks explained. Goten being the more naive of the two, so really smart or really strong I got it, the youngest son began using his passive scan of the surrounding area to determine if there were any girls that matched in the strength department. Wow can you feel that, most of the girls in this village are leagues better than the girls we've met in school. Trunks did his own passive scan and frowned slightly, yeah, he continued scanning and the more he scanned the more his interest was piqued. Wow that is a lot, letting lose a sneer that would make his father proud glancing at his best friend. Looks like we got some browsing to do, Godin. The younger Saiyan snickered, true, he glanced at the capsule Trunks was given, isn't Minato in the village right now, maybe we can ask him where the nearest bank is so we can exchange those gold ingots your mom gave you into some spending money then we can partake in browsing. Right, let's go, the two demi Saiyans took heading for the Hokage Tower. XXXN flashback Godin was currently flying over a large forest, unlike Trunks who settled on looking for the preferable needle in the haystack, Goku's youngest left the confines of the hidden leaf to explore the surrounding countryside. After all he decided to go out and find the strongest girl around his age, he had scanned the entire hidden leaf and found several girls in his range but most were well into their 20s and 30s, one did strike his fancy that was in her early 20s but she was a tad on the sadistic side, threats of feeding his junk to her snakes kind of put him off. And no other girls really drew his attention, Eno reminded him a little too much of his mother only without any of her good traits. Sakura and Hinata both were completely devoted to Naruto, so they were out, he sensed a potential candidate but had also sensed Trunks heading in that direction, so he balked focusing on higher power levels outside the village. He found one that was really high almost on par with Naruto's mom when he spotted her though he noticed she was older than him by a lot regardless of the illusion she was showing, so her candidacy was flushed. With a deep sigh the Demi Saiyan hovered eyes closed stretching out his senses as high and as far as they could go. What he found was both awesome and concerning at the same time. Two other power levels overlapped the more feminine one he felt, hers was the highest he felt outside of Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata, who had told him and Trunks could only mean one thing. Jinchuriki, he whispered aloud. Not wasting another second ignited his aura and flew at high speed toward those three power levels. Fu the Jinchuriki of the seven-tailed stag beetle, Shomei was currently battling two men in black cloaks with red clouds printed on them, and she was losing. 
gasping heavily trying to stem the bleeding from holes the loud mouth of the two had given her. She couldn't understand it, at first how it was possible until she saw the pentagram underneath the man. She grimaced at the metallic taste in her mouth. Great, internal injuries, she dropped to her knees could almost feel her two assailants stalking toward her, she knew almost instantly the moment they got to her she would be knocked out and not wake up again. Trying to fight off going unconscious looking up her eyes widened at what was approaching her attackers from behind. He Dan smirked looking down at the Jinchuriki slinging his scythe casually on his shoulder. About ing time, he snorted then suddenly he felt an ungodly amount of pain before getting launched into the air. Kakuzu turned in time to see a boy no older than the Jinchuriki bringing his hand up and saw what looked like a jutsu however before he could register enough speed to perform a replacement jutsu his world lit up and he vanished from this mortal world. Godin quickly used his senses to determine that the one he booted into the next forest finding him surprisingly alive but currently incapacitated, he quickly ran over to the girl, are you alright? H, how did, you, fly? The girl asked him looking at him warily, s, stay, back. Easy, I'm not going to hurt you, Godin stated dropping to one new pulling out a HOI poi capsule pushing the plunger and tossing it to the ground in front of him. A second later there was an explosion of smoke revealing a first aid kit. What's your name? F, Fu, the girl said fighting to stay conscious. P, please, stay, away. Hey, if I don't help you to a point your biju can finish healing you could still die, the demi Saiyan said gently the girl giving him a disbelieving look. Hey, a friend of mine was a Jinchuriki to the Nine Tails. Might know him, his name's Naruto Unzumaki. Why, you, no. Naruto kun? Fu gasped, watching as the dark haired gently cleaning and dressing her two major wounds. Raising an eyebrow at the girl, yeah, now let's get you someplace safer. That guy the first booted is still pretty much alive. He gently picked her up, lifting off, came to a stop some 12 miles above the area. Fu looked around in awe. Oh, I can fly because of my key. Not completely sure how it works, but I've been doing this since I was seven. Name's Godin's son, by the way. He smiled faintly the pink eyes Jinchuriki looked up at him. Sounded like you um, like Naruto or something. Fu nodded weakly, he shares my burden he's like a brother, met him after he finished a mission in the hidden waterfall village. Chomei told me he felt the fox's chakra. Well as far as I know it's only chakra, the fox was killed the day Naruto was born from inside his seal, by my godmother's husband, Godin explained looking around the area using his key to help Fu accelerate her own healing. Judging by the time frame neither. You or Naruto knew about that yet. Fu smiled faintly, do you do this often, come in and literally sweep a girl off her feet? Godin chuckled wanting to scratch the back of his head, actually this is my first time, so um did I do it right? Fu looked down slowly feeling like she was getting stronger, I don't know this a first for me too, but one part likes it and the other doesn't. Yeah I can see why, you're way strong this might make you feel not so strong. Godin smiled. Plus you're way pretty. Fu blushed. So where are we going? Um, where do you want to go, I can take you home? The demi Saiyan asked. Feeling a pit of lead suddenly start to well up in her stomach at the thought of going back to her lonely cabin outside the hidden waterfall cabin. No, please don't take me back there it's too lonely I come I, um, take me to my brother please. Her eyes shining tears at the corner of her eyes. Sure, Fu, won't your village miss you though? Godin asked seeing the girl's eyes cloud with both anger and sadness. No, they won't they barely acknowledge me, Fu whispered. The demi Saiyan frowned softly gently running his hand up and down her back in comfort. Okay, let's go I'm sure Naruto's parents will be happy to see you. His mom was the previous Nine Tails Jinchuriki so she'll be happy to meet you. Plus I can get to see more of you. Fu turned her head to look up at him giving him a quizzical expression causing him to blush. Goku, Vegeta and Makoto stood across from Naruto, Hanada, and Sakura two of their expressions were grim while the third was unreadable. Now what we're about to do will no doubt be the hardest and most emotionally painful part of your Saiyan training. You've mastered 200 times gravity surprisingly faster than Vegeta had. Goku smiled faintly at the last part, this even had Vegeta smirking a bit in pride. Naruto you've pretty much gotten everything I've taught you down, the Kamehameha, spirit bomb, instant transmission even my modified version of the instant transmission Kamehameha. Which leads me to believe those saps in your academy are even bigger idiots than I first thought, Vegeta growled. 
Yeah, Sakura spoke up. I mean Naruto-kun you only needed to be shown those moves what three or four times before you got them. It was amazing, Hanada simply responded. Naruto blushed at all the praise rubbing the back of his head, not used to so much. If anyone wonders your Minato and Kashina's son this past month proves it. More proof that you learning the shadow clone jutsu in three hours was not a fluke like many of the Jonin believe. Makoto responded a faint smile on her face then glancing at her two adult companions. Are you sure this needs to be done? These three wish to explore our world after the finals, to better protect themselves from whatever unforeseen circumstance, Vegeta explained. As Kakarot explained this will be emotionally trying however the benefit will far outweigh the downside. So what are we doing? Naruto asked. Simple, we're going to get the three of you to ascend to Super Saiyan, Goku explained. Um, what does that mean exactly? Hanada asked. Pain of loss. Makoto will be using her advanced genjutsu to put you under something that hopefully transform you, the Saiyan prince explained. Makoto looked down her eyes pained, I'm sorry in advance about what you'll each see, the Sukuyomi will pull from your worst fears of loss. The three teens looked at each other quietly for a second before Naruto turned to his godmother, let's do this one at a time, I'll go first. No, Naruto-kun let me go first, Sakura stated gently. Naruto glanced at her looking at her in worry, you sure? Yeah, all three of us have had painful pasts, Hanada because of her clan, you because everyone thought you were the Nine Tails, and me with the bullying and Sasuke's cruelty but I think I'll take longer, Sakura stated. Actually Sakura I think you'll go the fastest, Makoto stated causing the three teens to turn to her. This isn't about your painful past though it will make things easier for you to visualize, no this is about pain of loss, what you fear the most about losing. And you only have to things you fear losing above all else, your mother, Hanada, and Naruto. Sakura suddenly started shivering, the trio mention have been her pillars without them she knew that her life would have no meaning. I see, taking a deep breath, I'm ready. The Uchiha matriarch smiled softly, I admire your courage Sakura, her eyes morphed first into her Sharingan spinning wildly before morphing again into her unique Masenkyo Sharingan, which looked demon wind shuriken which began spinning. Sukuyomi. XXXQ Anakin's Dark Deeds from Star Wars Episode 3 Sakura found herself frozen in place watching first as the preliminary match between Hinata and Neji, only this version was going terribly wrong. The redhead watched her sister wife bleeding profusely from the mouth and gasping out in pain, using her key sensing abilities felt Hinata's key rapidly dropping. It is your fate to die, Lady Hinata for being weak and useless. Neji charged forward dipping under Hinata's weakened strike slamming into her heart. Sakura could almost feel Hinata's heart explode. She watched helplessly as her future sister wife dropped bonelessly to the ground, sadness and rage building. Hinata. Sakura screamed tears falling. The scene changed to that of Hidden Leaf, she spotted her mother speaking jovially with Ino but Sakura could sense something hovering above the village looking up she spotted. A strange grey and purple being arms crossed smirking cruelly at the village below. Frieza. Sakura whispered her heart in her throat, looking quickly to the village, everyone run, no one heard her as Frieza powered up his death ball. Sakura had just a second to watch her mother and Ino laugh before the entire village erupted into a massive fireball. MMMOOMMM, ENNNNOOO. Rage and despair rose Sakura clenching and unclenching her hands tears streaming down her cheeks. Outside the Genjutsu Naruto, Hanada, Goku, Makoto, and Vegeta all watched as Sakura was bathed in a purplish light that periodically giving off a golden aura, her hair going from her bright red hair to golden blonde, and her normally jade eyes turning teal. Almost there, Vegeta whispered. XXX and music QXXX begin Battle of Heroes from Star Wars Episode 3 Q Sakura tried to wipe her eyes as the burning crater that had been her village dissolved and transformed into a large lake and waterfall bookended by two large statues of Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha. Standing on the head of Madara Uchiha was Sasuke and atop Hashirama was Naruto only he was not dressed as he was now but in his old kill me orange jumpsuit and he had blonde hair. Confused then the fierce battle began. Naruto leapt to the Madara throwing punch at Sasuke who dodged it, punches, dodges, kicks, blocks, kanai thrown. Sakura smiled faintly as Naruto slammed Sasuke through the surface of the lake. Landing a few yards away summoning several shadow clones, 
Sasuke broke the surface glaring coldly at Naruto. Words were spoken but to the redhead couldn't make them out. Sending all his clones at once trying to overwhelm the Uchiha but the Sharingan kept said Uchiha from taking any major damage as the last clone was dispersed, quickly going through a series of hand signs, and a series of chirps were heard. That's Kakashi Sensei's Chidori, Naruto countered by summoning a shadow clone and quickly activated his Rasengan. The two charged at each other as soon as the two jutsu collided a bright flash followed by the two combatants flying in opposite directions, both back flipping and landing on their feet. Both growling deeply at the other Sasuke face started getting marred black markings that seemed to glow menacingly, as they cascade over his body quickly blending together to give his skin a grey texture and giving him wings. Sakura shifted her gaze to Naruto who was being coated in a red malicious chakra, eyes turning into red slits, his whisker marks becoming more defined and his teeth elongating. Sasuke re-summoned his Chidori only this version looking far more evil while Naruto seemed to create a Rasengan using the chakra cloak turning it from blue to purple. The two charged at each other again the stronger attacks colliding again, only this time the backlash was ten times worse, Sasuke however was able to come out on top driving his Chidori covered fist deep into Naruto's heart. Sakura watched helplessly as both were flung back again, Sasuke rendered unconscious while Naruto slumped to surface of the water a massive hole in his chest. Naruto weakly turned over glancing at Sasuke and smirked, I promised Sakura-chan I'd bring you back Teme. He chuckled weakly his eyes beginning to dull. Better be good to her, she deserves it. Wish it would have been me. He whispered tears up. Better love her like I do. Sakura heartbeat seemed to freeze. No Naruto, I'm yours not his, not realizing it she ran over to him grabbing him. Yubaka, I never asked you to do this. S, sorry Sakura-chan, the blonde whispered. No 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 no, Sakura's eyes welled up with tears. Please stay with me, you're supposed to marry me and Hinata, become Hokage, why, you see, can't do that, if, if you're dead. L, love, Sakura heard more than Naruto pass her eyes closed as overwhelming heart-wrenching pain enveloped her. N N N N N N N O O No A R R R R U U U U U U U U U U T T T T T T T T T T T T T T O O The rage at her helplessness along the sadness of it all was too much causing the dam to break. A huge explosion in her core spread outward. XXX and music cue the illusion vanished mostly because Makoto had to be held upright by Vegeta and Goku as Sakura's Super Saiyan transformation took place, her golden aura exploded across the entire training ground and upward, her head reared back in agony, her once red hair and jade green eyes became blonde and teal. The initial explosion ended Sakura slumped her head forward burying her face in her hands, sobbing. She felt two sets of arms embrace her, it's over Sakura-chan. Her heart exploded in something else overwhelming relief. Hanada and I are here, we're safe, Naruto whispered pulling her head into his shoulder. Naruto-kun, Sakura whimpered sobbing into his shoulder. I think it would be a good idea, to give them a break, Makoto whispered to the two Saiyans. I don't know what was in that illusion but it was devastating to Sakura. TCH, fine we have until the end of the week anyway, Vegeta stated. Naruto, take Sakura home. Makoto stated softly. Yeah, Naruto smiled a strained smile picking up his sobbing fiancé bridal style and launched into the air. And Naruto-kun, maybe we can bring her mom and Ino over, Hinata stated. Sakura smiled faintly, that sounds really good, she sniffled. Hinata was not completely surprised when Makoto activated the Sukuyomi Genjutsu on her, and no scenario of death appeared. She wasn't surprised for the simple reason that, her mother taught her before her death that, death was simply a natural part of life. Her mother stated one should rejoice in the passing of a loved one, that they no longer felt pain, sorrow, or anger, miss them in that they are no longer part of your life but be happy in that they are forever in a wonderful utopia. Though she held this philosophy she still despised her father's sperm donor for murdering her mother. As such she wasn't completely surprised she wasn't witnessing her father's death, Hanabi's death, Naruto and Sakura's death. While she would be sad of their passing she would simply accept their deaths. However there was one thing that she wasn't immune to, in fact a small part of her had been living with this since Hanabi had been born. Jealously, none were immune to it, 
Her sense of jealousy was compacted in three simple words, she was second. Her father doted on Hanabi almost since the moment she had been born, more so after her mother died. The Hyuga elders doted on her, while belittling Hanada. Her crush on Naruto had been hampered by her own low confidence and the fact he had a major crush on Sakura. He hadn't noticed her crush on him until Vegeta, Kashina, and Minato allowed their experiences and maturity be absorbed into his mind. Even now she felt like she was still second, even now she felt inadequate, second in all things of her life. This made her angry, nay it made her furious, she was the Hyuga heiress, she shouldn't be second to anyone, and yet she was. She was second in the Hyuga clan because Hanabi had a natural talent in the gentle fist, she herself wasn't mainly because she was more like her mother. She felt she was second in Naruto's heart even though deep down she knew she wasn't that both her and Sakura were equals with Naruto, but she didn't feel like an equal she felt more like a toss in choice. This enraged her more, she wasn't second fiddle to no one, and to be anything else now that her confidence had skyrocketed both in the eyes of her family and Naruto, she was beside herself in rage because she felt like. I am no longer that shy, weak, timid, little girl. I destroyed that perpetuated image the moment I left the time chamber. I am Naruto kun's fiance, his soon to be wife. I am the heiress to the Hyuga, princess in all but name. To be anything less, to be second is an insult and I will not take it any longer. Hanada's aura exploded in a darker golden, her wild pageboy style hair stood straight up, turning blonde. Her Baikugan lavender eyes went white before a teal green iris appeared in the center of each eye. Her flashing burning with confidence she barely had a month and three days ago. Glancing at her instructors and her lovers, she smiled beatifically. I did it. Um, Goku sensei I thought you said it had to be pain of loss that triggered the transformation, sounded to me like something really different, Naruto stated. Wounded pride, Vegeta explained. Her transformation was not unlike my own. When Kakarot had achieved his transformation I thought I could do it like a whim. When it wasn't the case if wounded my pride as both Saiyan warrior elite and the crowned prince, I became an enraged at the injustice of it all to a point where I exploded and transformed. Hanada nodded weakly, I had to dig up all my jealousy and feelings of being second to bring about my rage, it wasn't pleasant and I'm sorry Sakura-chan. What for? The red-haired girl asked. I had to bring my feelings that I felt you aren't worthy of Naruto-kun the Hyuga heiress stated sadly. Sakura smiled sadly walking up and hugging the girl. I don't feel like I deserve him either Hinata-chan, but Naruto the noble goof that he is feels differently. Hey I'm right here and for your information you're both equally worthy in both my eyes and heart, what will it take to convince you another four day romp in the bedroom, the whiskered marked Saiyan asked. F four days, Makoto sputtered eyes dilating. Uh, yeah probably would be longer. But we had training and stuff to do, Sakura stated, waving her hand. What do you think, Hanada Chan? Two weeks solid. Please, you're thinking to small Sakura Chan. Naruto kun's stamina could easily handle a month, minus breaks for food and water. Hanada smirked evilly as Makoto collapsed, backward blood leaking from her nose. Vegeta laughed hard. Brat, your chosen mates are a riot. Makoto Obasan. Naruto over to his godmother, gently rocking her should really know by now when Sakura and Hinata-chan are messing with you. The Uchiha matriarch sighed wiping the blood from her nose, they do it because of the years of neglect, you've suffered because Jiraiya-sensei and I weren't there for you. Standing up dusting herself off glancing at Naruto's two fiancés who both showed they weren't being malicious with their pranks. They were ten times worse with Jiraiya, and not just with subtle pranks but physically they held him solely responsible for Naruto's neglect from age 9 months to 6 years. Neither could really hold much of a grudge towards either godparent, because neither one of them helped their love during his academy years either, one had been a rabid Uchiha fangirl and the other a timid wallflower. You are the last one Naruto are you ready? Yeah let's do this Makoto Obasan. Darkness surrounded him, along with the whispers terrible whispers telling the orange haired Saiyan things he heard for the first 13 years of his life. You're a demon, a monster, who'd love you, the first series of whispers stated. You know there's a light that glows by the front door. Don't forget the keys under the mad childhood stars shine, always stay humble and kind. Go to church cuz your mama says to visit grandpa every chance that you can. It won't be wasted time always stay humble and kind. 
Naruto fought down a growl as his anger began building. I've never been a demon, I've never been a monster, I have friends, family, and two girls who love me. You're a failure, a loser, stupid, you'll amount to nothing, the whispers responded. You're wrong. Naruto snarled as his body exploded into a whirlwind of energy. Hold the door, say please, say thank you don't steal, don't cheat, and don't lie. I know you got mountains to climb but always stay humble and kind. When the dreams you're dreaming come to you when the work you put in is realized. Let yourself feel the pride but always stay humble and kind. I've worked myself to the bone to prove I'm not a failure, I hold myself to my nindo, I'll make my dream become a reality, the whisker marked Saiyan growled. Don't expect a free ride from no one don't hold a grudge or a chip and here's why. Bitterness keeps you from flying always stay humble and kind. Know the difference between sleeping with someone. And sleeping with someone you love, I love you, ain't no pick up line so. Always stay humble and kind, you'll fail, they'll die, you'll be alone, the whispers brought up. I'll defend all that is precious to me, I won't fail, I won't lose. I'll never be alone. Suddenly Naruto's hair turned gold and his eyes turned teal however the rage in his heart and his yearning to protect those he saw precious pushed the limits. Hold the door, say please, say thank you don't steal, don't cheat, and don't lie. I know you got mountains to climb but always stay humble and kind. When those dreams you're dreaming come to you when the work you put in is realized. Let yourself feel the pride but always stay humble and kind. Everyone watching the transformation had to shield their eyes, he did it, why isn't he stopping? Sakura asked. Whatever is being shown or felt is pushing him, Makoto had tried to end her genjutsu but it wouldn't end. Is there a level to push? Damn, that Gaki actually wants to push it to Super Saiyan 2, Vegeta glancing at Goku who actually smirked. This was probably the third in Vegeta's recorded memory he actually seen his fellow Saiyan actually smirk. Thoughts Kakarot? I just hope he'd like a spar afterward it'll be interesting, Goku stated cheerfully. When it's hot, eat a root beer popsicle shut off the AC and roll the windows down. Let that summer sun shine always stay humble and kind. Don't take for granted the love this life gives you. When you get where you're going don't forget turn back around. And help the next one in line always stay humble and kind. You're wasting your time, you'll never protect them you're not strong enough. Not like they'll care they hate you deep down, the whispers said. Shut up, shut up, shut up, stop trying to convince of something that are lies. I don't care if it is a waste of time, I'll train and get stronger, if that doesn't work I'll find another way. But I will not lose, I have everything I've ever wanted short of becoming Hokage. I have my parents back, friends, Sakura-chan, Hanada-chan, Pervy Sage, Makoto Obasan. I don't care if I die I'll protect with everything that I am. The area surrounding Naruto began to spark and grow darker. I'm going that what's precious to me so stop whispering words that mean nothing to me and leave me aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
We used the Dragon Balls in our world less than a year ago, if you can refrain from using this Meigenkyo Sharingan we could restore them and grant you benefit of using them without the downside. If however you used them and you lost your eyesight the dragon might not be to restore them. I will try, but the underlining truth behind the finals tomorrow may force me to use it, Makoto said softly. I hope I just I never have to use the Meigenkyo Sharingan from my son as replacements for my eyes. No parent ever wants to harm their children. Sasuke Uchiha gritted his teeth, this had been the fourth date he had been on and it annoyed him. When he wasn't training with Kakashi, though said training had been rather limiting in his mind. Mostly it was just speed training, so he fast enough to avoid Gara's sand with some mild taijutsu brush-ups, he finished evolving his Sharingan to the three Tomo marks so now he was eager to test out the copy wheel's full effect and managed it slightly when he watched Kakashi train alone. That Chidori will prove useful in the future, the only thing left for me to achieve is the Magankyo Sharingan, which is why I'm enduring this annoying fangirl for the last four weeks. Amy had been one of his staunchest fangirls since before the massacre and also his most ideal target for the what Itachi explained. On some level he was a bit sad about what he was going to do, if she actually managed to complete her training she would have made a decent shinobi, sadly that had to end. So what you want to do next, Sasuke-kun? The purple-haired girl asked brightly. They had stopped at a rather remote training ground deep down she hoped the two of them would get to two-second base thanks to all the seclusion. Sasuke looked at her with his traditional indifference stepping closer to her, while I can't say the last four weeks haven't been interesting. It has been some of the best of my life, Amy smiled lovingly. Really, then can you help me with something? The male Uchiha asked. Amy nods. Oh of course Sasuke-kun I'll gladly help you with anything, the purple haired had let her training slip over the last year focusing more on her looks, so she completely missed Sasuke bringing out the kanai or the sudden upward motion of his arm as he proceeded to bury the kanai up through her diaphragm and into her heart her eyes widened in shock and betrayal. Sasuke watched the life of the girl leave her eyes, he did indeed feel remorse this girl as pathetic as she was loved him, thank you. Naruto groaned sitting up scratching his head, looking down at his two angels and smiled faintly, both had taken to wearing matching sleepwear except changing the colors. Hanada and Sakura wore cotton pajama style tank tops and shorts, after their initial mating session. Hanada wore a beige top and dark blue shorts, while Sakura chose a red top with black shorts. Needless to say Naruto felt the assemble fit each girl in their own way. Both clutched at his chest in their sleep, Hanada taking her spot traditionally on his right with Sakura on his left. Looking at the alarm clock noting he had three hours before the finals began and reflected on the past month. His training with Vegeta and Goku had been rigorous and taxing to the point of him passing out at the end of each day, not mention his training in the time chamber. He also appreciated his parents even more now after undergoing their initial training. Minato helped him learn and master the Rasengan, even began teaching him how to incorporate his elemental affinity into the move. He also went through the Hiraishin seal work down the smallest detail finding himself enjoying seals. Which brought him to his mother who by all accounts he inherited his personality, love of ramen, verbal tics, and temper from. She gave him the nurturing, confidence, and warmth he missed so much in his life. It easily made up for the first 13 years of his life, she also taught him her taijutsu style, helped master his darker personality and helped bring out the biju chakra cloak he got from absorbing the fox's chakra. Of course without the biju present he couldn't make it stronger. Not like he really needed it, the Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2 transformations overshadowed the biju cloak but he wondered if he could combine them with enough practice and training. Lastly his mother taught him the Uzumaki clan's true stock and trade, seals. A full day, year, in the time chamber was devoted to the art of sealing and boy did he find his real calling in the shinobi arts. Everything his mother taught him was absorbed with gusto and he came back asking for more. This prompted his mother to gush excitedly at her son's eagerness and the two bonded even more getting as close as a mother and child could. He also got a rather lewd breakdown on the birds and the bees a good two weeks after the fact. He personally thought it was a good way for his mother to prank him. Makoto had him endure far more basic shinobi tactics, like stealth, chakra suppression, as well as teaching him some more A to S class jutsu, including her infamous blood clone. They tried to scale the jutsu back to B and C class but those wavered inside of his abyssal chakra control which was even without the fox shitty as all hell. 
Then came arguably the hardest part, the Super Saiyan transformation. Sakura's was by far the most traumatic having her go through mentally losing Hinata, her mother, Ino, and himself. He asked about her father which she stated the image was traumatic enough without adding him to the mix. Kashina cracked open her son's bedroom door smiling faintly at what she saw, Naruto sandwiched between the two girls that won his heart. Granted all three had their first times together after some rather intense training sessions. Vegeta stated that their Saiyan blood stirred so much after training that the urge to mate was simply too strong. He also said that Saiyan mating bonds grow extremely strong. When she asked why Goku was so unusual the Saiyan prince pointed out the fact the naive hero had severe head trauma that essentially erased his memories and his initial programming. He was the odd duck of the Saiyan race, yet in a sense to the prince, he's like his mother in that regard, Vegeta stated. Why did you know her? Kashina asked. By reputation only, she resigned from the invasion corps after getting rescued one too many times by her future husband Bardock, became a glorified cook, the Saiyan prince explained. So you think Goku went to some sort of backup programming when he conked his head, one he inherited from his mom? The Uzumaki matriarch asked. TCH, he inherited his gentleness and survivability from his mother, while getting his fighting potential from his father, the Saiyan prince stated. Sounds like Naruto-kun, Kashina squealed. Naruto you up? Kashina asked. Yeah, waiting for Sakura-chan and Hinata-chan to wake up. Naruto whispered smiling softly as both girls snuggled even closer to him, Hanada whimpering cutely. We were already awake, Hanada replied. Just too warm and perfect to get up. What she said, Sakura grumbled eyes opening. Kashina giggled, well can't lie in bed today, Naruto-kun has his finals to get to. You girls are going to have to relinquish him to get dressed, get fed, and get ready. He's not going to pull a Kakashi. Sakura made a face. That's actually a thing. Kakashi has being laid down so pat that it's a considered a term for being late. Kashina just shrugged, only to those that know him, which considering everyone in the village does I guess it's universally accepted. The whiskered marked Saiyan snickered, and what did we do when he showed early on mission? Wanted to check his head for a fever, Sakura snorted. The Hyuga Saiyan giggled. Wow I heard from Kurinai Sensei about his chronic tardiness but I didn't think it was true. Very true Hanada-chan, Naruto groaned sitting up. XXX Dragon Ball Universe. Time Nest. Less than a year ago, Xenoverse Timeline. The now famous Time Patroller defeated and destroyed the Demon Lord Demigra. Since then he has been chasing the younger sister of Dabura, Toa across time. The most recent fight was basically having to stop her from interfering with Gohan's run-in with Bojack. During the course of that fight he wondered where the eternal dragon pulled him from. The only Saiyans alive currently was Goku and his family, Vegeta and his family. Trunks stated his father died before he had any other children in his timeline, as for the alternate timeline only Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, Trunks, Goten, Pan, and Bra who will be born soon. Um, Krona I know this would sound odd but what timeline did the eternal dragon pull me from? I don't remember anything from before I appeared here in the time nest. Why do you ask? The supreme Kai of time asked looking up from a time scroll. Regardless of how powerful the eternal dragon is, you don't just conjure up a Saiyan from the ether. Was I a part of the Saiyans from the distant past or am I from an alternate timeline where planet Vegeta was never destroyed? The time patroller asked. I'm outside time now so telling me won't affect the outcome of my birth. I did a check while Trunks had you stop Raditz. Krona stated softly. Ironically you can thank Vegeta for your birth, Nagato. You're the son of Naruto Uzumaki and Sakura Uzumaki. You have a baby sister and you have twin half-sisters from your mother's co-wife Hinata Namikaze. You mean from the major timeline shift that happened a month ago, I was kind of worried about that, Nagato stated. Krona sighed scratching the back of her head, I didn't realize by making that wish I altered the timeline. In the original timeline Naruto went on to become the seventh Hokage, married Hinata only having two children, while Sakura lived a really forgetful lonely life with Sasuke Uchiha bearing only one child. But how badly is his timeline altered? Nagato asked. The Akatsuki, his main threat will be destroyed can't tell you how, but it happens soon. Orochimaru the secondary threat is killed today by your grandparents and your great aunt, the supreme Kai of time sighed heavily. What about Toa? She altered her attack pattern slightly, 
She's completely avoiding the timeline when Gohan fights her brother like the plague though. She's tried to use Bojack, Brawly's first encounter with Goku and company, Android 13, and Bio Brawly. I'm beginning to think she has major crush on Brawly, Nagato smirked. Well considering he's a 12 foot tall mountain of muscle what girl wouldn't want to tap that, the only major turn off is his insanity, Krona snickered. Nagato Uzumaki raised an eyebrow at his employer, seriously, he blinked turning and spotted a time scroll giving off the dark energy. Walking over and opening it, Krona, looks like Tao is at it again this time she's focusing on Jime, his eyes widen at what he saw. Um, in the original timeline what happened to her? She was destroyed with planet Vegeta, why? Krona asked walking up and peering down at what was shown. What she saw confused her, several of Frieza's men were standing between a space pod and Goku's mother. H how long has this timeline been altered? I'm thinking since before you made the wish, Nagato stated. Have I spent so much time focusing on the current timeline I've overlooked older ones, she paused a moment rolling up the scroll handing it to the Uzumaki patroller. Fix this timeline, and while you're doing that I'm going to go looking through the older ones, she turned to the door. Trunks, get your butt in here. The purple-haired young man ran looking nervous, what's the matter? Pull every scroll from earlier time periods, revolving around your grandparents' era I want them picked over with a fine-toothed comb. I completely missed the fact that Jain was supposed to leave Vegeta shortly before it blew up and I want to make sure that is the only deviation, Krona stated. Um, who's Jain? Trunks asked. Gohan's grandmother on his father's side, the Supreme Kai of Time elaborated. G. Goku's mother. Trunks looked shocked for a second before running into the vault floating up to pull scrolls from that time period. Better get going, though I have no idea how it'll affect the current timeline, Nagato saluted and vanished into time. What do you think will be the outcome? Trunks asked. I don't know this has gone on since Goku has been an infant, time once repaired will figure itself out I hope, Krona said worry lacing her voice. Ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon and welcome to opening round for the Chunin final exams, Minato Namikaze smiled listening to the crowd cheering. As you know it has been customary for these exams to promote a wartime feel in peaceful eras. While Minato went through his opening speech his son stood on the parade ground arms cross dressed in a more battle friendly attire than he had during the month long training regime. Black Jonin style pants, dark red Jonin shirt, black flak jacket, and a long black hooded cloak with orange flames surging up from the bottom of the hem. His headband tied to his forehead. He glanced at his teammate looking at the Uchiha's smug expression. What's with you finally managed to get laid this month? Tamari and Konkuro snickered slightly, Shikamaru grunted looking annoyed but to Naruto that was par for the course with the lazy Nara. Shino's only expression was to raise an eyebrow, while Neji and Gara remained stone-faced. Troublesome, came Shikamaru's reply. Keeping your eyes open is troublesome for you, Shika, Naruto chuckled. The lazy Nara grumbled, whatever. Sasuke meanwhile sneered turning to Naruto, I've managed to evolve my Sharingan this month, activating his Sharingan revealing the three Tomo marks. Well good for you, didn't remove your shitty attitude though. In comparison the stick in Neji's ass has a better attitude than you, Naruto smiled slyly. Neji snarled, I don't care whose son you are you're still a failure and are fated to lose. I got permission from your uncle to rip that stick in your ass out and beat you over the head with it. Like I said to Kiba before I handed him his ass, you won't lay a hand on me, Naruto's eyes flashed teal and his orange colored hair flashed blonde. HMPH, was Neji's only reply. Tamari smirked slightly, is it me or is that guy getting hotter each time I see him, she whispered to her brother. I'm a guy so I wouldn't know, Konkuro stated. In the stands Sakura and Hinata, were greeted by Trunks with Tenten. Wow this kind of reminds me of the world martial arts tourney I took part in. Why because of the big crowd? Tenten asked. That and the fact Naruto is going to breeze through each round, the highest power level I'm sensing is that Gara guy, and he's about Nappa's base strength when he came to earth with dad, Trunks explained. That's because he has a biju sealed inside him, a voice stated from Trunks left. Turning the small group saw Godin and Fu walking up. Yo, Godin raised his hand a huge smile on his face. Sakura snorted at the Kakashi reference, what? Sounded like my sensei for a second there, Sakura explained. Pleased to finally meet you Fu, 
Auntie Kashina said you've been adjusting well to the new village, Hinata said cheerfully. Yes, Fu is happy here more so with Godin Kun, she looked down at the participants of the finals. Shame your dad isn't here Godin Kun. Training for the next fight as usual, though he is taking it easier, Godin noticed Trunks giving him a wall-eyed stare. For him anyway, instead of training every day, he takes one day off to spend with mom. He said eventually he plans to start taking two days off from training. Trunks crossed his arms over his chest watching as all the Chunin exam finalists leave the arena minus Naruto and Neji. Bout time this thing got started. I can't believe there's a room in your world that lets you get a year's worth of training in a day, Tenton whispered looking at the Demi Saiyan. Hey, well according to dad, it was the only way to get Naruto fully trained up with everyone he wanted to learn from, Trunks explained. Tenton and company turned to watch as Neji slid into his gentle fist stance while Naruto simply stood across from the Hyuga prodigy his arms crossed over his chest looking bored. Looks like he's got your dad's mannerisms down trunks, Godin snickered. Yeah, one of the side effects of the power transfer, trunks snorted. Naruto stood across from Neji outwardly looking bored but internally he was trying to judge how much he should drag out the match. This was for a promotion after all. He was judging Neji's stance, posture, current power levels, everything right down to how the other boy's hair was moving in the wind. However, he also had to take into account the probable invasion, as such, he needed to be at full strength in case he needed to fight. All in all, speed was the key, and with his training with Vegeta, Goku, and his own father, he had plenty in spades. The moment Genma dropped his hand to let the match begin, Naruto vanished from his spot, catching everyone in the arena off guard, minus Hanada. Sakura, Trunks, and Godin. Even his parents and his aunt Makoto, who knew of his training, had been caught off guard. Neji barely had time to turn around before Naruto slammed a backhand into the Hyuga's face, sending flying. As the Neji flew, he felt something grab his ankle, looking down, grimacing in pain. His eyes widened, seeing Naruto suddenly jerk him downward in his fist and slamming it into Neji's jaw, causing him to crash into ground below. Naruto dropped to the sliding a bit before turning and noting the Hyuga wasn't moving. Concerned he ran up and checked the Neji's vitals. Pretty birds, Neji's muttered eyes swirling seeing cages and birds flying around his head. Naruto rubbed the back of his head looking sheepish, um, Proctor looks like I knocked Neji, stupid. Genma glanced at Neji seeing the boy was incapitated, yeah, winner. Naruto Uzumaki. A stretched was rolled up and two medics put the Hyuga prodigy on it then rolling him out. Naruto simply used his instant transmission to teleport back to the staging causing everyone minus, Gara and Shino to take a step back. Sasuke glared coldly, he did nothing it was all just pure speed, minimum effort. How strong is he, how fast I couldn't track him he was so fast. Will Sasuke Uchiha and Gara of the desert come to the arena, Genma announced. The Uchiha sneered stepping forward, I forfeit. Orochimaru snarled discreetly in his disguised, blast that brat. Minato glanced at his wife then looked behind him at Makoto, he's going to run the moment the invasion starts, he signed subtly. Let Naruto take care of it, Makoto, Kashina quickly signed. He's my son, I failed him it's my responsibility to take care of it, Makoto signed back. Please, Kashina begged. It's our responsibility too. He's part of the family, it'll be hard enough as is. Makoto glanced down at her estranged son, then at Naruto, who was glancing in Sasuke's direction before looking directly at her. Closing her eyes, fighting tears that were welling up, she realized in that moment her youngest child was a lost cause, madness, anger, and hatred had consumed him. The loving boy he was had indeed died the night of the massacre. Opening her eyes, focusing on her future stepson and godson, she made a slitting cutthroat motion. All she received was a grim nod before Naruto focused on the next match between Shino and Konkuro only for Konkuro to forfeit. You forfeit your match Shikamaru I'll tell your mom, Naruto stated glancing at the lazy Nara who grumbled about troublesome blondes forgetting Naruto had orange hair. Nice one Shika, now you pissed off your opponent, the whiskered marked Saiyan smirk Shikamaru looked over at Tamari seeing her glare at him. Go easy on him, he's a lazy idiot. Tamari snorted. No promises. XXX, Dragon Ball Universe, Q. Moves like Jagger, as background music from a radio. 
Goku was currently doing some one-handed push-ups vertically while balancing Pan in his free hand and Chi Chi sitting on his feet counting out for her husband. Pan was wiggling to the music while giggling madly. Goku himself was chuckling at his granddaughter, absolutely adoring how close his family was getting at this moment. Not far off Gohan and Vital were talking quietly among themselves, and judging by Vital's blush the two were probably discussing having a second child. About midway through his 1050 rep, he felt it. A power level registering roughly at 2000, so it wasn't much of a concern but its direction was, coming from space usually meant an invasion of some kind. With a sigh, Chi Chi I need to get up, the ox princess looked down at her husband before she herself felt the power level looking up and gave a groan. What idiot would be suicidal enough to come here? Gohan asked speaking up also looking to the sky as Chi Chi jumped down. Wait that power level isn't dark, if anything it almost feels like you dad. Goku gauged it again and nodded taking a deep breath in relief. Thank Den for that, he whispered taking a life had always heavily on him though he did it to preserve the earth and protect those that are precious to him, namely his family and friends. It was one of the many things he and Naruto shared across dimensions they both fought for something worthwhile. Judging by the rate of descent it'll land just outside West City. I'm sure Vegeta will be there ahead of us. Gohan, Vital, both grabbed Goku's shoulder for instant transmission, and just before they teleported Chi Chi picked up Pan and touched Gohan's shoulder. The Sun family vanished from their home, a second later. Vegeta stood quietly in an open field arms crossed gauging the rapid approaching power level, wondering who it could be. At first he thought it was his younger brother but it gave a feminine feel the only female Saiyan that had been off planet when it was destroyed had been Fasha one of Bardock's crewmates but Dodoria had reported to Frieza she along with the rest of Bardock's crew had been killed. Even then Fasha's power level was at least in the 8000 range, on par with Nappa at his base power. That should have sent up red flags in the elite corps immediately if a group of third class could reach those power levels and Bardock had reached 10,000 at the time I can only imagine what kind of power level he would have had today. A second later he felt Goku and his entire family pop up behind him, it should be any time now. Who do you think it is? Gohan asked. It's a Saiyan that much I do know however I know only of myself, Raditz, Nappa, your father, and my brother that made it off world, the only other group that had been off planet when it was destroyed was your grandfather's group and they had been killed by Dodoria, Vegeta explained. Bardock, Goku whispered softly feeling an echo in his mind, I wonder. Quickly a space pod appeared in atmosphere rocketing down and crashing barely a hundred yards from the gathered group. Vegeta and Goku floated over to the pod and landed in the crater the pod created. Vegeta looked inside and spotted a woman he didn't recognize but could easily identify the third class Saiyan armor. The woman was pretty, but it was her facial structure that gave the prince pause. He reached over and pulled the emergency pin that vented the animated suspension gas. He stepped back motioning Goku to do the same. The gas expelled and the door to the pod opened, looking in both Saiyans watched the woman begin to stir. She squinted her eyes looking up her eyes wide and seeing Goku, Bardock? No this is Kakarot, Vegeta stated. The woman focused on him and her eyes widened before bowing her head. P Prince Vegeta. The woman said startled then her head shot as Vegeta's words registered she slowly climbed out of her pod standing in front of a very confused Goku as she gently reached up cupping the man's cheek. You've grown up so much, I barely had an hour to hold you before you were shipped off, it seemed no matter what I did or how much I protested they took you away from me, her eyes watered. That bastard Frieza took my baby son away from me, she cried. Both Vegeta's and Goku's eyes widen at this, your Kakarot's mother? The woman nodded looking up at her son sadly, I tried to fight you being sent off, then when Bardock warned me about Frieza coming to destroy the planet I immediately went for a space pod, she paused debating about telling them telling about the time patroller helping her get into the pod. I set the coordinates for earth after a small issue involving Frieza's men and a man from the future. Orange hair, green eyes, wearing black, orange, and red, Goku asked getting a nod from his mother. Time patroller. He was there to correct a rip in time, that means she should have followed me here. Vegeta gritted his teeth, Supreme Kai of Time's pet patroller, who is that kid his power is twice what Gohan's was when he fought Cell. Um, Gohan? Goku's mother looked confused. Goku blushed rubbing the back of his head, I'm married and have two kids, and one granddaughter. 
Goku's mother's eyes shined brightly, I have grandbabies. The resulting squeal was heard from the rest of the gathered Sun family, who quickly went down to see the newcomer. Gohan was the first to approach, um, dad, Vegeta what's going on? Vegeta turned looking mildly annoyed, this Saiyan is your grandmother. You can call me Grandma Jine, the woman said jovially, her monkey-like tail doing a corkscrew. After that introductions were made with the remainder of the Sun family. XXX. Naruto's world. Shikamaru raised his hand in defeat after both he and Tamari had a match of strategy and counter strategy that been for the ages, more so because of Temuri's jutsu had more range. In the end Shikamaru managed to distract the wind user enough to get her caught in his shadow possession jutsu. However the fight had drained the Nara significantly of chakra. Will Naruto Uzumaki and Gara of the desert come down to start the first semi-final match? Naruto appeared first in his instant transmission turning to look up at his parents who gave him both nods, signaling their ready start a counter-offensive against Orochimaru. Gara appeared in his sand shunshin, arms crossed. You will prove my existence, Uzumaki. However Naruto wasn't paying attention too much focusing on his orders before turning back to the sand jinchuriki. Sorry Gara, but today isn't the day for you. Powering up causing the entire area to darken and spark gathering power before he vanished from his spot just as Genma started the match. A second later Naruto appeared in front of Gara, burying his fist into the sand shinobi's stomach before slapping a suppression and neutralizing seal on Gara's forehead. Gara is unable to battle, winner Naruto Uzumaki. Both Tamari and Konkuro eyes were wide, no one had ever been able to cause an injury much less beat him, but to do so in two moves was simply unheard of. Naruto grabbed Gara leaping to the contestant booth. If you don't want to be a part of this invasion follow my clone. Naruto quickly summoned a shadow clone. What you know about the invasion? Konkuro asked. We've known about it since the second task, met a member of the Uzumaki clan in the forest she was also a part of Orochimaru's intelligence gathering team during these exams. She gave us everything, Naruto stated calmly. My parents are even offering to fix Gara's seal and get him counseling for the emotional traumas he's suffered. Tamari looked at her brother on Naruto's shoulder before looking down at the floor, why? My mother was a Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, heck I was Jinchuriki for 13 years, Naruto paused. Can't tell you how I stopped being a Jinchuriki without dying, as it's classified but the two of us know what he's gone through. Temuri's eyes started flooding with tears, please if you can help my brother, I. Naruto held up his hand, already planning to, now let's get you and your two brothers to safety, then I got a certain Uchiha to deal with, he stated ominously causing everyone to turn to find Sasuke had vanished. Shino, Shikamaru get ready, no sooner the words had left Naruto's mouth the arena started to be cascaded in feathers. Genjutsu, he whispered looking over at the stands as sound and sand ninja started appearing from under disguises. Get going. Shino find your clan outside the arena and have them join Jiraiya. Need them to suppress snake summoners outside the walls. Shino nodded as Naruto turned to Shikamaru. Shika, need you and your team to help with evacuating civilians before they start becoming human shields. Troublesome, I'm already on it. Any other orders you want to give? Shikamaru raised an eyebrow. Yeah smile more. Naruto smiled at his cheek before launching into the air focusing his senses on Sasuke. Asshole just broke Makoto Obasan's heart and I'm going to take it out of his said ass. Trunks slammed his fist into a sound shinobi sending his brains into the next world along with the rest of him. Interesting follow update, Tenten Chan, the purple haired Demi Saiyan quipped. Well I like to keep things spicy, wouldn't want you get bored with me, Tenten replied. Trunks glanced at her giving a faint smile, not going to happen there. Godin kicked one sand shinobi ducking another coming in behind him only for that attacker to get sent flying by a water dragon jutsu used by Fu, who jumped back avoiding a kanai strike to her back the followed was stopped by Godin firing off a key blast vaporizing the offending shinobi, well can't say Naruto's world isn't lacking for fights, this place is awesome for that. Fu is loving this village, have mom and dad, a brother and two future sisters, give up all 14 previous years to do this again. The seven-tailed Jinchuriki replied. Fight's good too, she giggled sending another sound shinobi flying with a back kick. Hanada slammed a gentle fist strike into a sound shinobi's heart causing it to explode, before ducking under a kanai slash from behind, 
rolling her hips with the duck to bring her foot up slamming into the other shinobi's chin knocking him flying, that's 15, she said smugly. Sakura growled doing a spinning kick nailing one sand shinobi and two sound shinobi, you're not beating me, cha, she powered up and went flying crashing her fists, feet, and even her head into any invading shinobi in her path, 21, eat that. 24, Hanada said casually letting loose a smirk. Growling even more Sakura slowly turned her head toward 15 sand and sound shinobi, her eyes white in rage and fist clench, you guys are going to be my cha. Kakashi sighed looking at Hanada, I counted Hanada you only have 21, why are you riling her up? Hanada giggled, it's kind of fun, and Naruto kun was right she looks really why when she's angry and it's directed at someone who deserves it. Wow Hanada did you actually prank someone, Ino said looking at the normally reserved Hayuga in awe. The Hayuga Saiyan's eyes widen, I did? Yep, Kiba stated smirking at his teammate, pretty sure Naruto will be proud. Hanada's smile turned brighter slamming an open palm strike into a sand shinobi. Kashina and Makoto smirked, one had her arms crossed while the other had hers on her hips looking at the snake Sani. Minato was holding his two signature tri-prong kanai in each hand, keeping his face neutral. H how? Orochimaru growled watching the two coffins he tried to use to summon the first and second Hokage, only for Kashina to use seal tags to prevent the coffins from opening and then Makoto activated her Amaterasu to burn the coffins to ash. For all your genius Orochimaru, Minato sighed sadly, you overlook a lot because of your narrow-mindedness, he glanced to Orochimaru's left and smiled faintly, isn't that right to Yuya Uzumaki? Orochimaru's eyes widened in shock spinning around to stare at his former subordinate who dropped the genjutsu on her left shoulder revealing her heaven's curse seal had been removed her normally brown eyes now replaced with dark violet eyes. He then turned back to his opponents feeling the fear grip his very soul. There was a reason why Minato had earned his flea on sight declaration from the hidden stone and even the Sanin respected that which was why he stayed well clear of the village when Minato had been Hokage the first time. He recently dismissed the fourth's return as a very elaborate genjutsu designed to fool the public at large. But somehow Minato and Kashina had cheated death. I don't understand how are you alive? You can thank yourself, actually, Kashina snickered. When you used that five-pronged seal on Naruto you pulled him into his mind space and met someone from another dimension. And that dimension has a group of powerful artifacts called Dragon Balls. They can give those that gather all two wishes that are within the boundaries of the dragon's power to grant. That could be anything, including immortality and have knowledge of all jutsus in the world. Orochimaru's inner monologue was halted when he felt unimaginable pain. He looked down seeing Minato buried his trademark jutsu deep into gut, while the two women had grabbed his arms holding him in place. Makoto's Meigenkyo Sharingan spinning wildly holding him in place mentally as the Rasengan began tearing apart his body. S stop, you fool. As fourth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village I have found you guilty of treason and crimes against humanity, your sentence is death, goodbye Orochimaru, Minato said firmly pressing the Rasengan deeper, Orochimaru's body lost all cohesion ripping to pieces in blood and gore splattering all across the roof. Makoto winced her eyes dulling as she deactivated her eyes, damn it, she whispered. How bad? Minato asked concerned. Everything is a blur now. I think it's finally happened, Makoto said sadly. Kashina looked down sadly, and the Dragon Balls were used recently so does that mean we won't be able to restore them? Minato turned to his wife and his future wife, there is one chance but it'll be hard. Sasuke, the Uchiha matriarch stated. Sasuke moved swiftly heading east he knew the invasion would be put down swiftly especially with Minato Namikaze as Hokage. So he had a small finite window to make his way toward the eastern border and once crossed he planned to head north into stone country. He figured the hidden stone village would openly embrace him if he offered himself and his keki genke. He also heard rumors that the third Suchikage had a granddaughter, as such he felt it only natural to choose said granddaughter to help establish the Uchiha clan in the hidden stone. Before the Uchiha could make another running step found Naruto drop literally from out of the sky landing in front of him. Loser, he stated coolly. Egotiscal emo, Naruto smirked patting down his pockets and Sasuke looked at him questioningly. Hmm, it's time to kick ass or chew bubblegum and I'm all out of gum. You can't defeat me, Sasuke glared activating his Sharingan. Didn't come here to defeat you, 
Naruto's eye narrowed and hardened. You've been named a missing nin, and with a major keki jenke that could be used against the hidden leaf as such the fourth hokage stated you were to be executed the moment you were found. Sasuke immediately activated his Meigenkyo Sharingan, as if you could. Naruto simply raised his hand aiming it at Sasuke's chest, I'm sorry Sasuke, we are brothers not in name, but in pain. Before Sasuke could even comprehend and react what that meant a large energy blast erupted from Naruto's hand going straight through the Uchiha's torso. Sasuke dropped to the ground eyes returned to normal and dulled as death quickly took. You died alone and disgraced, if you had simply let go of your anger and hatred you would have been so much happier, the orange-haired Saiyan stated to the corpse. Pulling out a tanto and a scroll he dropped to one knee, severing the head and placing it on the scroll before sealing it into the storage scroll to preserve it. He then went about destroying the rest of the body. Minato and Kashina were helping Makoto out of the arena, the last Uchiha matriarch burdened down at the thought of losing her youngest son, mostly at his own sense of greed and for power, something she felt she could have prevented if she actually been in his life. I failed him, she whispered softly. He gave into the Uchiha madness Miko chan nothing you could do about that, he was like his father in many ways, including his love for power. Itachi-kun loved his village and you loved your family for the most part, Kashina stated. My love for my family only extended to my sons, you, Naruto, Minato-kun, his students, and mine. I could give two shits about my clan, Makoto explained. Minato chuckled slightly, sometimes Makoto, clan isn't family. Kashina-chan and Jiraiya-sensei can safely state that the Uzumaki clan had more love of family than a single member of ten other clans. Kashina puffed her chest out proudly, the Uzumaki clan was just awesome like that, ya yeah, know. Makoto giggled softly, thank you both, everything around her was a dark blur, while her eyesight wasn't completely gone it might as well be. Let's get you home, you're in a really vulnerable state right now, Minato whispered. XXX. A day after the invasion, sitting quietly in the Hokage chair going over the hundreds of after-action reports with the liberal use of a shadow clone for added aid, he stared periodically at a particular scroll sitting on his desk that contained the sealed head of his soon-to-be stepson. He frowned slightly before going back to his reports chuckling slightly at one of Kakashi's reports about the impromptu body count contest between his future daughter-in-laws. An apparent masterfully pulled prank by Hinata on her future co-wife. It works so well mostly because one would think a Hayuga is incapable of pulling a prank, my son's influence is strong in his future wives. A knock on the door prompted him to stop his inner dialogue, when Naruto, Shikamaru, Tamari, and Jiraiya entered. He pulled out three folded chunin vest two forest green, one dusty brown, and placed them on the front of his desk away from his current paperwork. Naruto Uzumaki, Shikamaru Nara, and Tamari of the desert, I present you with your chunin vests in acknowledgement of you passing the chunin exams, he paused looking at Tamari. Normally your village's cage would be the one to present you with your vest, but with your cage's death and no current successor announced to fill the role, it falls to the cage of an allied nation or your current daimyo to present you with the vest, however your current daimyo is under investigation for possible bribery. As such, the yellow flash scratched the back of his head much like his son does when things either annoy or confuse him. I got to say your country is all kinds of messed up right now, how is your brother? Tamari tried to keep a smile of off her face when the fourth Hokage stated her country was currently in the crapper and his concern for her youngest brother. He's doing fine, Lady Kashina and Lord Jiraiya strengthened his seal enough to allow him to finally sleep and Lady Kashina has taken to talking about her experiences as Jinchuriki to help him cope, she then glanced at Naruto. Naruto extended a hand of friendship, Gara is a little stunned right now. Minato chuckled, I can imagine. Being in the world of the Uzumaki clan is both a bit scary but can be a wonderful place. Jiraiya rolled his eyes, scary as putting it lightly, getting a raised eyebrow from his godson. Shikamaru sighed, troublesome. At any rate both you and Shikamaru were dismissed, Minato watched as the sand kunoichi and the Nara left the office before turning to his son and sensei. Now, I have a mission for you too. The hospital has seen better days and our medic nin program is shoddy at best and nearly non-existent at worst. So I'm ordering you both along with Kashina to find and bring back Princess Tsunade. Jiraiya sweated for a second, can I bring back Orochimaru to fight, less painful. The fourth Hokage smirked at his sensei, 
I wouldn't think you'd be afraid of a woman you've drooled over since you were in your teens, sensei. Afraid no, terrified yes, Jiraiya stated. The woman can punch through solid granite, kid, and doesn't like my preferences one bit. Then maybe you should lay off being pervy, pervy sage, Naruto spoke up looking at his vest and grumbled slightly, hey dad is there any way to dye these vests? No orange, Naruto, Minato stated sternly. Nah, I was thinking black or a dark blue, planned one wearing a burnt orange colored long sleeved shirt underneath to you know make it really stand out, Naruto explained. Both Minato and Jiraiya blinked looking at the boy, before the yellow flash smiled, sure, most ninja supply stores do have dyes for vests during peace time, however you need to keep one vest the standard forest green in case a war does come up. Naruto nods slipping on his vest, you should relax pervy sage, mom and I won't let this Tsunade person hurt you unless it's warranted. What would you consider it as warranted, kid? Jiraiya asked. Hitting you for no reason, if she has a reason to hit you, then the assault needs to be justified, which means anything perverted in your case, the orange-haired Saiyan smirked. Thanks for that vote of confidence, kid, Jiraiya sighed. You got an hour. Naruto say your goodbyes to Sakura, Hinata, and your godmother before you leave, Minato stated. Naruto nodded, I got it, if I didn't say anything before I left Sakura-chan and Hinata-chan would never forgive me and Makoto Obasan would cry, not something I ever look forward to. The orange-haired Saiyan left leaving the student and teacher alone. You think the Akatsuki know about Naruto's current strength? Minato asked. Jiraiya shook his head, no, however Godin may have tipped them off that he's got at least some increased protection inside these walls, so they'll be twice as desperate to grab him outside. That's why I suggested bringing Kashina along, it'll make whoever they send think twice about attacking him outright with both Jiraiya of the Sanin and the red hot Habanaro of death protecting him. Minato frowned grimly placing both his hands under his chin thinking. Outside Itachi, Hidan, and Kakuzu, who else is a part of this organization? Right now unknown, at any rate they don't know the fox is dead, Jiraiya stated. Minato grimaced slightly, that's not entirely true, half of the fox is dead. What do you mean? Jiraiya stated. I gave the yin half to Naruto the night he was born. The young half I sealed inside myself and we both went into the belly of the Shinigami. My soul was stuck inside the seal that I left inside Naruto. When Vegeta made his wish, the eternal dragon didn't exactly pull a body from the either he restored, Kashina and my body, with everything pretty much intact, including the young chakra of the nine tails still sealed inside my body, Minato lifted his shirt and channeled some chakra into the seal revealing it. Jiraiya's eyes widen, how could everyone overlook that? Minato chuckled weakly tucking his shirt back in. I didn't realize until after my fight with Orochimaru I noticed how unstable my chakra was I barely could hold the Rasengan together. Kashina was the one who spotted the seal last night, the fourth Hokage rolled his eyes noting his sensei getting a perverted smile on his face. Anyway I meditated like you taught me and found the nine tails inside a cage with the seal. Surprisingly enough he was pretty subdued. When I asked him why he stated he felt his young half dissipated. Jiraiya nodded. Well I better get going now I have even more reason to make sure we got all our big guns inside the village. With that the toad sage left. You didn't tell him about Kagaya? Kurama suddenly spoke up. I doubt we'll really need to worry about her, with Naruto, Sakura, Hanada, Trunks, and Godin in this village alongside Trunks and Godin's family I'd say the Hidden Leaf would be the safest village on the planet, Minato explained. The fox nodded the experience of actually dying even for a brief period was an eye-opener and not something he wanted to repeat especially since his previous Jinchuriki was now eons beyond him in power. Both Hinata and Sakura grumbled looking at their fiancé as he finished getting ready for his mission. How long do you think it'll be? Sakura asked. Depends on how good pervy Sage's spy network is, the orange hair Saiyan gently ed his red-haired lover who stood back and frowned at him. Not being fair Naruto-kun, she pouted earning a giggle from her co-fiancé glancing at the Hyuga, before sighing. Sakura took a deep breath, training, training, and more training until you get back. You think these Akatsuki clowns are going to move forward when they realize how strong you are? Naruto nodded, more than likely try and attack me, looking for Princess Tsunade, if they do well it'll be at least two less members to worry about, believe it. Still be careful Naruto. Sakura-san and I can't bear the thought of losing you, 
Hinata finally spoke up. Naruto leaned over and Ed Hinata, I'll be careful promise of a lifetime, believe it. Both girls watched as the young man they both have come to love more than life itself left the house giving them both a brief thumbs up. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.